listening to the Pagan Centered Podcast, bringing unique and intelligent perspective to the masses using contemporary technology, allowing for free discussion of one's personal beliefs and enlightenment of those not familiar with a particular religion. We bring to the forefront many issues that are ignored or shunned upon by mainstream religion. We discuss topics on a religious and non-religious level as they relate to our panel representing varied belief systems. Our brute honesty and candid opinion has made us one of the longest-running and most popular pagan podcasts. Feel welcome to call in live or submit listener feedback via our website, pagancenteredpodcast.com. And welcome to this episode of PCP, the Pagan Standard Podcast. I'm Dave. I'm Amber. I'm Scurve. Also joining us tonight are. <laughs> I'm Jason. <laughs> and I'm Star. All right. So tonight we are talking about Pantheon 2011. We are doing a recap of Pantheon 2011. And because none of the PCP crew went, we invited a bunch of people who actually did go. So we can do an episode about it. So we'll get to that right after these messages. Yay. And we're back. How is past the Akon? Intense. <laughs> you, you get very little sleep. Heard you um, were doing because it is, like- there's a lot of awesomeness like going on. And, uh, and the last workshop begins at 11 p.m. and ends at like 1230 to 1. And, and, and then the first workshop the next morning starts at 9 a.m. So... Uh, yeah, it's intense. You basically, the whole thing, you just, it's just a a race against tired. The whole thing. I mean, it's, you basically, there, you know, by, by day three, uh, I was like a walking zombie, you know, I, I got too little sleep and you're just, you're just running from thing to thing and your like smile muscles hurt because you're meeting and talking to so many people at once. And you, you know, you try to have like meaningful conversations with three to 400 people over, you know, the course of, you know, three days. It's just crazy, but it's a great kind of crazy, but totally crazy. Yeah, and you keep having, like, good intentions. You think, I'm going to go to this workshop, and then, like, you end up having lunch with, like, Aaron Ron Laurie and Diana Paxson, which, you know, is better than the workshop you were going to. But, like, unexpected things and unexpected conversations and stuff like that keep keep happening. Like, y- yeah, you, you make good plans and you make good intentions, but then, then the convention just sort of takes over. So... You know, it's it's very different from an outdoor festival, which is what I was much more familiar with, with, you know, pagan festivals. And at pagan festivals, you know, you meet and you're talking to people and you're going to workshops, but you're also spending time sitting at your campsite where you're relaxing. You know, you can have downtime that's not completely closed off from everyone else. Or you can sit at the, you know, at the fire in the evening and kind of, you know, space off and that kind of stuff. But um, this was almost like a frantic pace the entire time and then you go back and forth between being happy and excited at meeting friends from online um, to having you know total fangirl squee moments because you got to talk to a BNP or you know someone you really like and so it, it was it was kind of amazing and very draining I, I was talking to Star when when uh, um, P, P, PCon was finally over with, and uh, she was still in her hotel room. I was like, well, basically, it sounds like they took PSG, put it indoors, and crammed it down into three or four days. Um, Pretty much. To, to some degree, but <laughs> that's, that's the, a, the emphasis a, was... Oh, go ahead, Jason. No, go ahead. You got it. Oh, well, I mean, the emphasis was very different, like... Like, PSG was, you know, all of these people came together and they built this village and we were like one tribe and one community. And there was a lot of emphasis on unity there. And at Pantheacon, it was more of um, a celebration of diversity. And it wasn't better or worse than, like, Pagan Spirit Gathering, but it was very different. And, uh, and it was cool because, like, you met Pagans that you hadn't really 
realized existed before. Um, at one point, I went to a little like meet and greet session, and I kind of walked in, and I was kind of like, "Oh wow, these these people are too cool for me." <laughs> it was just it was just weird. It was like I I you know I, I I felt like I'd walked into a whole new dimension of paganism that I didn't know existed, and I was I was I was uh, surprised and enchanted and overwhelmed. Did you guys have moments where, you know, you did get to meet somebody that you would, you know, never thought that you'd meet in your life, you know, um, an author or a, a speaker or something like that? Yes. I got to meet Margot Adler, which was fucking rocks. And it was really awesome because uh, I have, I have uh, met a lot of, you know, big name pagans since I started going to events and stuff like that. And uh, I think the, the one big name pagan who I, I still kind of get a little bit like little fan girlish over is probably Margot Adler. So I was very happy to actually meet her and like chat with her a little bit. And I was super honored that she showed up to uh, the PNC meet and greet. I, I got to meet someone, I, I was super excited to meet him, and um, most pagans really don't have a clue who he is, um, but if you're a Hellenic recon, you certainly know who he is, and that was Charles Stein, and you know, and he's an older gentleman, and he's, he's an academic, and he's a poet, and, and he was um, presenting his translation of the Chaldean verses, you know, the oracles um, from Hakate. And so I was extremely excited about this and I was telling people about it and everyone had no fucking clue who I was talking about and it really didn't matter. So I went there and I was a little overexcited and very overtired and I think I creeped him out um, because he kind of kept his eye on me after I, I, I met him and gushed to him and was like, oh, I can't believe it. And yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I creeped him out successfully. <laughs> But I don't care because I still got to talk to him and, and have my little moment of happiness there. Um, my, well, my moment, um, I had a couple of those. The, the first one is, um, w one of the first books I got as a pagan was by Erin Rowan Laurie. And so I've always been a big fan of hers. And, and we've become like Facebook and Twitter friends and um, so I actually got to meet her, and that was cool, and I actually got to hang out with her. So that was my first fangirl moment. And then at one point, um, I think it was on Sunday, I was in between workshops, and I was frantically, like, I just needed something to eat as quickly as possible to go to my next thing. So I go into the little restaurant there, and she's there at a table full of people, and she, like, waves me over and uh, has me sit down and join them. So on one side, I have Erin and Lori, you know, well-known Celtic Reconstructionist, and on the other side I have Diana Paxson, and I was just like, oh, I'm, I'm just surrounded by pagan awesomeness right here and right now, and that was, yeah, that was probably the coolest moment while I was there, because it was just completely serendipitous, and and yeah, and and I, so I basically nice got, I got a heathen, I got a heathen 101 lesson from, from Diana Paxson, so that was really cool. <laughs> Yeah, what's nice too is that I mean there there's a I mean there isn't really a lot of snobbery. I mean, of course, there's always a little bit because we're human and you know we some people are just jerks. But uh, on the whole, I think that really people are, you know, you become friends with these people. It's not like a snobby thing. Yeah, everyone I spoke to was very warm and approachable. Um, um, Everybody was very friendly. Everybody was interested in talking to everyone else, and everybody was very welcoming to everyone else. I mean, I walked into a heathen ritual with my pentacle and my little goddess figurine on, my, on a chain and my pink hair, and I, mean, I participated into a heathen vote, and I was welcomed in. Um, um, and I wasn't certain what my reception would be either because, you know, uh, our, there's, there's some small bit of friction between our communities. But so yeah, I got to be like a full part of that, and they were all very welcoming and hospitable to me every time I, I um, I had interactions with them, and and that was really really cool. 
um, to, to be able to approach a, a totally different aspect of paganism and, and to just be welcomed like that. Do we all want to switch over to me hosting this call? Maybe. Yeah, everybody's audio is getting a little bit choppy, and my internet's much better than Scurvy's. Scurvy. Okay. Okay, okay works yeah. for me. I'm gonna hang up with everyone, and I'm gonna con I'm gonna dial you all back really quick. Hang on. Okay. One, okay. Two. Oh, why the hell did you go over there? Two. Three. That explains why I'm having a hard time adding everyone. Four. What? Well, because I wasn't hosting the call. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is a little bit different hole, huh? Wow, that's completely nice. Miles. And hopefully mine is a little better now. Yeah, everybody's better because everybody's connected to me. Yay! Woo! Hey, we got a Miles, too. Yep. Hang on, let me just make sure. Where the hell is Jason? Jason oh, Jason went to go pick up his wife from work. Jason, <coughs> yeah, he'll be right back. Kara, Ashley's here, Joe, and we picked up a Miles. Mm, turkey burgers. That is much better, everyone. Resume conversation. Yeah. So the first part of the episode is going to be pain in the ass edit. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. It's not that bad. <laughs> There's going to be a chopper landing. I officially know Krav Maga now, or I'm starting to. Awesome. Yes. So I can how's... break out of chokeholds. So how's the Wi-Fi at Pantheon Con? Um, in, in the public areas, it was slow. Um, if you paid for it in the room, it was awesome. <laughs> but in the in the public areas, it was slow, and it was also hard to when you had a moment free. That was generally when everyone else had a moment free, so it was hard to grab a table where you can sit and and do your thing. And and of course, the danger of of taking your laptop down to the to the little lobby area to sit and and try to uh, to get online and and do some things is that. Once again, you get drawn into amazing conversations. I, uh, I, I, I sat down to try to, to try to check my email and ended up in an absolutely fascinating conversation with someone from the board of directors of Cherry Hill Seminary. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> it was it was interesting. You you didn't really. I, I think people with smartphones had had the best uh, Wi-Fi experience, probably. So you going to get a smartphone finally? Oh, you know, <laughs> I, I know you've been resisting split. it very, very, very strongly. Very strongly. It may be before the next Pantheon Con, but, but, um, but, um, before the next, uh, Pantheon Con, maybe, but probably not before PSG. It'll take me some time to warm up to the idea. So what are hospitality rooms? Just, just you know, ran, going off random things I, I did while notice while monitoring the hashtag PCON. You know, the hospitality rooms um, were sponsored by groups. Hello? And, wow. Yep, we got gotcha. you. Yeah, you just have some just, background like, noise. Put on like a headset or something. I'm on a headset, but I'm also in a coffee shop. This might not be the best time to do this. Yeah, I, I, the background uh, noise is, is going to be murderous in post-production. Ambivalent. That is very true. I apologize. Who is it? Hmm? Well, oh, everybody's well. So, I shall lapse on this one. Okay. Thank Hi. you, everyone. But I'll we still love again. you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You too. <laughs> Bye, Miles. And call. There you go. <laughs> well, <okay>. <laughs> Random <laughs> interruptions tonight. This is what happens when you have 15 people on an episode. The, you were asking about hospitality suites. Yep. 
um, you know, they were sponsored by groups and it was a way for them to um, have a place for their members to meet up. Um, but it was also a place for people who were interested about those groups to kind of go there and find out more information. And a lot of times they were set up to um, be really receptive to people just kind of wandering in and saying, what are you about? Can I get more information? Um, many of them had drinks there. They had some food there. It just depended on the group. Um, that was during the day. During the evening, some of them then would have some pretty whipping parties. So, you know, you could you could take your pick as to what you wanted to experience with the hospitality room. Yeah, I, I think I visited three of them. Um, I visited the COG NWC Narugd. Um, I, I can't remember the, the that exact acronym, but it was like Narugd. Um, <laughs> Um, and they were all very, very nice and very welcoming, and they, they allowed us to have the PNC meet and greet there. And um, and then with Kara, I got to visit the Stone City Pagan, Stone, Stone City Pagan Sanctuary, um, where we got to pick up uh, copies of American Mystic, and um, we got to meet Morpheus Ravenna, who was an American Mystic, and uh, and we stopped by the Asatru, uh, the Asatru Suite, and and they were very very informative and very welcoming and uh and yeah they were the, they were just a really cool part of the event when when we went and went to the stone city um a lot of people were you know going there and they were going there to meet the director alex mar or they were going there to to meet morpheus who was in it or that kind of stuff but i was really interested in meeting morpheus's husband shannon because we've been facebook friends for a number of years and so it was another one of those cases where you just wanted to put a face to a name and, and finally meet someone face to face so it was it was kind of interesting how you could go somewhere with a group of people and go to the same thing but you were all getting something different out of it yeah that was that was really interesting there was a lot of that where you met people that you knew on facebook um yeah. and uh yeah and yes. it, it was, it was it, it was it was funny because uh, you know I, I dyed my hair pink before the event just to make sure that people who were looking for me would recognize me. And the very first person who came up to me, you know, all excited and everything, I thought they recognized me, but no, they just thought that my hair was really cool. And uh, <laughs> it was funny. So so thankfully I didn't say anything egomaniacal like you know. <laughs> I was I was nice, and then and then when I realized that they didn't actually know who I was. I was, you know, I, I had that saving grace. But uh, well, at least you didn't whip yeah, out your I got, pen and say, "Here's my autograph." Right? <laughs> Let me sign your boob. <laughs> exactly. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, and it was cool because we got to meet some of the the PNC members that we had con corresponded with: Cassette from Florida, and um, Lily and Greg from the Bay Area, and David from Sacramento, and. Uh, Seems like there was someone else there, um, and I got to see see uh, Kara and Nels again, which was cool. So, um, and yeah. and that was interesting. There was a lot of PNCing going on. <laughs> there was a lot of PNCing going on. Um. It was actually kind of cool. We had our meet and greet at the Cog Suite, and um, which was more than just Cog, but but that's the easiest way to say it. Um, and uh, so, you know, we didn't know who was going to show up or anything, and we got there a little bit early to help set up and stuff. And and so, you know, nobody important showed up. Just the the Pantheacon coordinator and Selena Fox and Margot Adler and in Maka Nightmare. Um, Andres, um, oh, I, and I know Peter Diving was there, uh, from COG, and it seems like there were a couple of other important people there, but yeah, that was a little, <coughs> that was a little awe-inspiring, um, but, uh, but it was cool, I, I, I think it went, it went well, it was kind of funny to see some of the, generational differences as far as news goes. How oh, so? Hello? 
<laughs> well, <laughs> well, when it was interesting, people's attitude towards the concept of doing the news, like reporting your local community news, um, because, and, and you could see it kind of along a generational split. Um, some people who had been in paganism for a number of years, and of course they had come in it in the beginning, and they still vividly remembered um, some pretty horrific stories of personal persecution due to people knowing that they're a pagan. Um, they were a lot more, a lot more leery about it, a lot more cautious. They wanted to know a lot more about privacy protections and things like that. You know, really, what they wanted to know is you're not going to inadvertently out someone. And oh my God, are there people really? you know, willing to do this and have their name out there and be out there uh, and have you do a news story on them, how can they risk it? So there was a little of that. Um, however, once you once you got to about like age 40 and below, people were like, oh, well, yeah, you know, of course. So it, it was interesting that divide. And then I think it has to do with, um, just, you know, society's change in how they see pagans, um, you know, for the most part, now we get people that might say something to you. You might have some, some job issues and things like that. But the stories of people having their windows broken and that type of thing are, are far fewer than it was at the, at the beginning, you know, like in the 60s and 70s and things like that. Mm -hmm. it, it was interesting, too, because there were, there were two elders there who did have experiences with the PNC. Um, one was Selena Fox. Um, who uh, has graciously invited us to come back to Pagan Spirit Gathering. And the other one was Andres, who was part of the Pagans at the Parliament Project for the Parliament of the World's Religions. Um, so it was interesting to hear them talk about their, uh, their different experiences with the, with the PNC. Um, and, uh, and, and it was interesting, some of the, some of the elders who were, who were there visiting and, and and hearing what we had to say had their own stories about other pagan news uh, efforts uh, from the past, like newsletters and magazines and that sort of thing. So um, so so that was interesting. Um, and uh, and and it was just it was just insanely cool to have Margot Adler, you know, sitting there front and center. Um, I don't know about the rest of the PNC folks, but that made me extremely nervous because, like like many people, I you know, she uh, she's awesome. I listen to her on NPR, and I've I've read, you know, the very latest edition of Drawing Down the Moon to catch her latest insights in the group she's tracked. So that was uh, that was cool. That that really made it found, that really made it seem like what we were doing was interesting because Margot Adler was interested in what we were doing. Well, it is a bit daunting to have someone like that listening to you when you're talking about your fledgling news efforts. And most of us, you know, are not, we're not professional journalists, you know, so we're, we're kind of figuring this out as we go along. And, you know, some of our efforts are better and some aren't, and we're trying to learn from each experience. So um, it's, it's like, you know, having, having the hot guy at school see you with braces and no makeup and your hair looking like shit, but promising that you're going to look really good soon. <laughs> I swear I get breast one day. <laughs> Just stick around. <laughs> I've been saying that for, you know, almost 30 years. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was really cool. The panel was interesting. Jason's not here, so I'm going to talk about him. Um, we we kind of thought that the the whole introduction to the PNC thing, which was at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning, so our, our turnout was not as good as it could have been. We have this huge section of ballroom, um, and and you know we did not quite fill that at 9 a.m. on a Sunday morning after people have been up partying Saturday night, and. Uh, and so we kind of thought that Jason was going to get there and talk and do his thing. And he, he might point us out in the audience and have us, like, stand up and wave. No, he pulled us all up there <laughs> and had us talk. So there was, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there were, other than Jason, there were seven PNC members up on the uh, on the, the stage. And and I think I think we got some credibility because we talked – 
not just about our our successes, but we also talked about places where we had stumbled and and had to sort of figure out what we were doing again. Um, so it wasn't like, you know, we were up there saying, you know, we've got this all figured out. We're, you know, pretty honest about how, you know, we we were trying to figure it out and we were trying to work it out. And, you know, we, we figured out really cool things that we do well and, and we figured out things that we need to... Uh, to uh, figure out how to improve on, like like how to engage and work with the the local community, is a uh, is a challenge of PNC Georgia's, um, and and PNC Minnesota, um, were able to share the the success stories of how they how they operate and and some of the stories that they've covered, which is awesome. If you haven't checked out PNC Minnesota, you most definitely should. Yay, Minnesota. <laughs> It's all the Germans and Scandinavians here. We're very orderly people. <laughs> when you know, when all the when the bureaus were able to be together face to face and able to have a little bit of conversation and talk with Jason, it did really bring home um, areas that we need to work on and areas that we need to regroup on and uh, that we need to make a more concerted effort to assist one another. You know, it's very hard when you're only talking over email or you're on a, on a Google list together uh, to feel connected and to really help one another, especially with something as complex as covering the news and doing so in your, your neck of the woods. Um, but, you know, we've had some conversations and I think we do have some direction so it's it's pretty exciting, you know. I think we'll be I think we'll be seeing um, a lot of renewed vigor on on PNC. And, yeah, and now that was, we've totally made this about PNC, PNC and not Pantheacon. <laughs> Pantheacon what? <laughs> there was a Pantheacon? Yeah. Really? Well, you know, I mean, but it it was a big deal for PNC. I mean, just just getting to see each other and sit down and. And I mean, not even have like really structured conversations, but just being able to sit down and have lunch with you and Cassette was mm -hmm. was a big deal. And and uh, it was uh, it was for me, it was extremely helpful just to uh, just to be able to sit and informally talk. And and, um, you know, it's the old thing about pagans in the Internet. Uh, it's for me, it's very easy to get frustrated with the pagan community when I only deal with them on the Internet. And then we go to a, a festival or something like that, and, and we see each other face to face, and suddenly, you know, I, I fall in love with my, my community and my tribe all over again. So it was it was great. We were just talking about you, Jason, and about how we uh, how you pulled us up. On <laughs> Did I say that out loud? <laughs> how you pulled us up on stage at the introduction to the PNC, and, and we were not expecting that. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, they were a dick. <laughs> oh, I warned I warned everybody that that could happen. You know, I actually, I I think that you're just misremembering what I told you. That's all. Now, now you just want to call me a dick for no reason. See now, <laughs> this is why we There's record. Yeah. <laughs> so, so oh, I man. remember. Uh, a very, very impassioned rant by a certain person in the PNC about <laughs> pagan organizations should contact the pagan news when something is going on so that the pagan news can cover it instead of, you know, pagan news reaching out and being like, I heard you had news. <laughs> and this is a very impassioned <laughs> subject. They even wound up on an episode of PCP here. <laughs> And this is your grand website launch. This, this has been led up to for two years now, the PNC website launch. Guess the one thing that's not on the PNC website. Well, we admit that there were some bugs. <laughs> uh, but but we've know, got it all that, worked that out now. <laughs> but, you know, that discussion was happening through PCON hashtags. And... Uh, there were PNC members there, so if they really had like breaking news, all they had to do was like grab us. We had our we had our press tags on. <laughs> but, they didn't yeah, have to I, I email quickly, us. I, I, I mean, in my defense, I, I will say that uh, the lead up to PantheaCon was like so super duper crazy, and I was trying to get like a million things like together before I left and. 
<sighs> well, you know, things happen. But we fixed it as, as soon as the problem was pointed out to us. So, <laughs> but yes, I realized I realized the irony of uh, of the that whole situation. So, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> you know they were totally waiting to get you on that, right? <laughs> of course. Like Dave, Dave was Dave, dreaming about Dave, it, you know. Oh, I got bigger he, fish to fry. He's like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm he was like, here I have him. My bad. I'm hearing a happy Dave. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So where? Yeah. Let's see. Oh, so, so were we talking? Turn into PNC yeah. the podcast. What the hell is the PNC up to nowadays? Inquiring well, minds want to know. Uh, well, first off, we've we finally launched the new website, and uh, our big thing right now is that uh, I I don't know for those of you who are on um, on any of the PNC lists, I just sent out a big kind of vision thing where um, where basically I at, when I was at PantheaCon, I was just so inspired by all of the bureau folks talking to each other and meeting each other and really working together that I was like, you know, uh, the thing we really need to concentrate right now is on building our infrastructure for the future. And like, that's our number one thing. And so right now I'm hoping to kind of steer all of us who are volunteering to try to, to start, you know, building up that whole infrastructure so that we have something that people can plug into. Because I think that's been one of our big failings so far is that, you know, we, I mean, obviously we're, we're very young, we're a very young group. And, but I think that, um, you know, I think the, if we keep building up the bureau structure, I think we can really start to actually do some great work. And so, so I basically wanted to shift, make sure that we're all just focusing on that right now. So that's kind of my, that's where I think we we are right now. That's my thought. But Star and and Kara can chime in on that too. Yeah, I mean, it it, it was definitely helpful for us to be able to, to sit face to face and and talk about the issues we were running into. I, I certainly feel much more positive about the future and. Um, you know, we, we traded a bunch of really good ideas and, um, it, it was just really helpful that the internet can sometimes be a difficult thing to, uh, to communicate through. But, um, yeah, but we, t we told them, Jason, about the, the meet and greet and about the introduction to the PNC. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, and, and we can... The, the bureaus are putting out some good content. So even though we are focusing internally ourselves on, you know, kind of getting things together and, um, you know, working on, on some, some core things that, that we need to have set and as a really strong base, there's some, there's some good reporting coming out of the bureaus. Uh, and so, you know, if, if people go to the main site, they can get a good view of what's going on at all the bureaus. You know, there's, there's some headline stories and then there's also, you know, on your right hand side of the web page, there's stories from each bureau, you know, the latest one that they put out. And then you can, you can always click through to go into any of the bureaus. So I would definitely keep your eye on that. And then the, the project blogs are also still up and going and, and strong. I know, you know, Warrior and Kin's going to go through some, some revamp. Um, but the juggler has some great content up there. Um, there's been several, several, um, new posts just in the last couple of days on, uh, pagan in politics. So there's a lot of good content being generated. Yeah. And I also, th and in addition, we're still planning on doing joint uh, media coverage with folks. And I think that's going to do well. And I think we got really positive response at PantheaCon from that. And in fact, the brand new Bay Area Bureau, I went to one of, they had a meeting there, which I was able to like pop into and they were they were great. They were like, okay, here's the event schedule. Who's covering what? You know, who's going to go to this event? Who's going to go to that event? And they they've got a bunch of great stories that are in the pipe right now that they're going to be putting together, including some audio. And I'm hoping to to get that out to the our podcast pals. And another great thing too is that I was talking. Uh, I don't know. Um, you may Sparrow and Mojo from the Wiggly and Way were there at PantheaCon this year. 
And uh, I think there's talk of maybe finally building a bureau maybe around podcasters up in Toronto. And I think that might be a very interesting experiment. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I mean, the PPP itself is kind of doing its own thing right now. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we're doing, we basically take what you're doing and, you know, we're already doing it. <laughs> you know, right, we, we've yeah. already got that infrastructure in place. We already got the pagan media map, who's doing what, where. So if you want to meet the podcasters, we already got nine shows showing up to PSG 2011. So. Yeah. It, I mean, you guys are, I mean, think, you know, like PCP in, in, in general is just doing a great job. I mean, you guys, you guys like need no help. You're like your own media juggernaut all on its own, you know, and you're kind of like the flag, almost like the flagship of the PPP, you know, it's kind of like, as like the wild hunt is to the PNC. So the PCP is to the PPP. I like just all the, um, let me see if I can throw any more acronyms in there, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're recording but the first PPP I, podcast tomorrow and I've decided to come up with the most alliterative long name I could for it. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> that was making a joke when I read that. <laughs> We're totally going to say it though. Oh yeah. 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 Definitely. Well, Ash was asking in chat about the after party. I, I'm yes. Yes. And be the party pooper. <laughs> I mean, I went to like the uh, the Pandemonium concert, and you know, I did my little white girl shuffle out on the dance floor for a few moments for a few songs. But um, my 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 big after party moment was um, I met up with Scott and his wife um, uh, from from the PNC. Uh, he's one of the the tech folks for the PNC, and I went to Denny's with them, and <laughs> I had a Coke float. <laughs> That was that was your that was your after party. That was my big after party, man. I was out till two thirty at a Denny's with a coke. <laughs> wow. See, and Star oh, beat me. Yeah. She was a wilder party animal than than I was. You you, you guys are unfortunate. I, I, you got a bunch of non partiers on your podcast. I I did go better. to one thing. I I went to the, on Friday night. I went to the Solar Cross and uh, New Alexandrian Library. Uh, meet and greet, which was at the evening, and that was quite uh, fun, and I got to have lots of great conversations. But um, I didn't do a lot of partying. I mean, I didn't go to the absinthe room. Ah. I didn't like, you know, I didn't go to like the mead room, ah. you know. So there's going to be no <laughs> drunk news bureau of the PNC. Ah, that's what we are. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Head but next, if, on next if you year, we go, gotta go and show them how it's done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, 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 the PC. I think next year the P instead of the instead of the PNC the the PPP should all go and they should have a meet and greet and then they can have a giant huge bacchanalia of liquor. And, uh, Hell's I, yes. There's a lot of pee going on. <laughs> and I and I will and I will totally show up to that <laughs> and take pictures. But do it. <laughs> you gotta do Twister with it, but replace the colors with Scrabble letters. <laughs> no ways. You know what? Since most of us are going to PSG now, I may not bring a tent, but I swear I will bring at least three or four bottles of different kinds of liquor. Yeah, like Somebody just bar. bring mixers. <laughs> oh, I'll bring cocktails there. <laughs> and Twister. I, I, I mix a mean cocktail. <laughs> She does. She made this like elderflower thing that had a lot more vodka than I realized while I was drinking it. That yeah, was she was like, there. woo! And I'm like, <laughs> there's three shots of vodka in there. Oh, yeah. Speaking of partiers, <laughs> for those of you who will wind up on the Outer Banks for Beltane, we are having a small little party out there. We've got a little uh, powwow going on, and 2,000 people are showing up, and... Uh, you want to get <laughs> get some after hours action? Go to Amber's porch, which is literally across the street. Yep. Don't worry. Just ask who Amber is, and everybody will know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, since we're we're talking about alcohol at at PantheaCon, I I got to go to the um to the Troth bloat uh, uh, honoring Waylon the Smith. Did you um, leave bloated? No, no. <laughs> but uh, they they had they had brought their own homebrew to oh. to place in the horn, and uh, you know they they passed the horn 
and you 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 toast and then you sip and when i sipped it it was good it was very tasty and uh, if i did not think that you know a bunch of very burly norsemen would take issue with with me i i would not have given that horn back <laughs> <laughs> it was it was good stuff they make good homebrew um but yeah and, and the rituals are really cool i only went to three um one was the troth blot, uh, and and it was really good. It was it was fascinating. Um, I, I I really enjoyed that. Um, the other one was I went to the ADF ritual for um, our neo pagan ancestors, um, which was it was interesting. Um, um, Kara went with me for that, and and you know they honored pagans who had passed and. Um, that was interesting. It was very different from from other rituals that I had been part of, and I went to the uh, to the Bakoy Antenu, uh, which was um, a, a really cool uh, like a sacred drama ritual put on by the uh, Ecclesia Antenu, um, uh, and it was. Uh, it was it was really sort of it, honoring like queer gods and um it was uh it was it was a lot of fun because you know they they had this like massive greek tragedy at the beginning which like you know I'm a softie I cried and uh and then they got in true greek fashion they got raunchy really quick and uh and it was a lot of fun you know it it was cool to see that and still see it being a a sacred thing so and now, those are now you know why I'm a clinic. I went to one baby. ritual. <laughs> I went to one ritual at PantheaCon, uh, which was the Morrigan ritual uh, that was put on by Sh- Sharon Knight, uh, uh, Thorn Coil, and uh, Morpheus Ravana who's in the American mystic documentary. And that was super, super duper intense. But, uh, you know, more than the rituals, it was interesting. Just, um, I'm a people watcher. So this was a fantastic venue for people watching. And I will do unabashed listening in on people's conversations everything like that. And then I'll just butt in and start talking to them and ask them questions about their conversation. And, um, most of the time people react well to that. Sometimes not, not so well, kind of like, um, and you are, (laughs) uh, but it was just really interesting watching different groups and people interact and watching people's reactions to what was happening and what they talked about and what they took from it. And then listening to another group talk about the exact same thing, but seeing it completely differently. So that's that was extremely fascinating to me, and I got to do that like for four days. So I was in heaven for that. Yeah, there was, I mean, like visually, that was the most interesting pagan I, event I went to because, you know, you had the people like me who are semi-normal looking, um, when I, at least when I don't have pink hair, um, uh, but a little on the granola side, and and you've got the the full out bohemian sequins and tie dye pagans, and you've got the goths, and you've got the the Norse guys and their kilts, and they've got their black t shirts with runes all over them, and and then you have uh uh you know these really interesting uh, uh transgendered pagans who have like really amazing costumes and corsets and everything that are very elaborate, and and then you have and the weirdest thing of all, like, you know, is that then you see these pagans who are wearing suits and cowboy boots and, <laughs> and they look like they look completely different from everyone else in the place. And so it, it, it's sort of funny that it's the people in the suits that tended to stand out more. And uh, <laughs> I find that I found that kind of funny, but they were delightful people. Oh, sure. Now I know how you really feel about me, Star. <laughs> well, let's face it. <laughs> Screw let's you, it. chick. <laughs> you, <laughs> did Did you guys see the? Remember the? Uh, did you guys see the the t shirts from the metal band, the pagan metal band Hawk? Yes. Uh, uh, they had the burn the burn Rome t shirts. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. That's <laughs> awesome. They're they're a heat they're a heathen metal band. So it made me think that uh it reminded me of the old joke, uh if you're so goth, where were you when we sacked Rome? But Nice. <laughs> 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 yeah. There were there were, there were a lot of interesting t shirts. Um and there was a really interesting man named Bubbles who had a very large nose ring and he was going around blowing bubbles at people. And that's as far as I know, that's all he did the entire weekend and it was fabulous. With a and, very uh, straight face. Yeah, he is, <laughs> yes, he, he was very serious about bubbles. it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then it was really cool because you saw so many BMPs like buzzing about, you know, there was Oberyn Zell and his full wizard robes going here and there and um, every time I saw Z Budapest, she was like hurrying to something or other and waving at people and hugging people and just very happy in general. And, um, and yeah, so that was really cool that you saw so many people that you, that you recognized, uh, and you know, they were out and about and chatting with folks and, and very approachable and, uh, and, and that was cool. It was sort of surreal. When, when someone who's like books you have read for years um, just sort of wanders by and like waves and smiles and, you know, like it's, you know, it's normal for, for you to know their greatness. Or you see a whole table of elders sitting down having breakfast together. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Peter Dibing isn't, isn't here right now, but he was telling me that at one point he was in the cog suite and he said that it was like Selena Fox and Starhawk and Margot Adler and M. Mock Nightmare. And he said that they were literally sitting there talking about the day they reclaimed witchcraft. Because <laughs> they were all there. And he was like, that was just a very uh, uh, surreal moment. <laughs> I said they should put it to music, like the song The Day the Music Died. And nice. I could create this whole nice song and we could do a little video to it. Right? Yeah. I think that would be amazingly epic. Yeah. I was joking that some of the Celtic Reconstructionists could put together the Pantheacon triads. (laughs) That would be sweet. That would be funny. Well, there there was one song that I'm trying to convince uh, the the (laughs) Ecclesia Antenu to put together. They, um, as part of their ritual, they took Lady Gaga's Alejandro, only they made it Hadriane, Hadriane, Ave Hadriane, Ave Hadriane. It was really cute. It was really, <laughs> really cute. And, and so that's become my new quest is I want that song, re- re- that parody recorded and, and put on YouTube. So. To the quest mobile. <laughs> so um that was really that was really, but seriously i mean the best part of the event was just these random conversations that you would get drawn into and the interesting people you would meet i met a woman who works for current tv and she was giving me the lowdown on the you know the the sort of the overman deal and and how he's going to fit into the organization and that was just kind of cool and I met a lady who is reconstructing um, the original Judaism in its original polytheistic form. And that was just sort of mind-blowing to me. I I didn't even know anybody out there was doing that. And uh, so it was just the people that you just struck up conversations with while you were standing in line or eating lunch or or waiting for a workshop to start. that, That was really sort of the best part of the whole experience. Can can I do a, a like a festival and con PSA that is so important? We have to get the word out on this. People we need to give out free deodorant. Take a fucking shower. What is wrong? How? <laughs> Tell the elevator I'm, story, oh please. Uh oh. Okay, you know you get crammed in the elevator. It's a con. Lots of people crammed in the elevator, right? So I'm crammed in the elevator in the back, and I am at armpit level with this gentleman to my left, and. He smells like, I mean, he would put a goat to shame. It was horrendous. So I'm standing there, and I'm just thinking, please let this ride be over. And he looks down at me, and he goes, oh, are allergies kind of getting you? Because he was eye-wateringly smelly. And I looked up at him, and, you know, I can be blunt at times. I know it's a shock, but it happens. 
And so I said to him, uh, no, you just smell so bad. You need to bathe. You know, you're killing me. <laughs> you know, and kind of, he kind of laughed and other people kind of laughed. I'm like, no, seriously, dude, you know, like you have these showers, you know, right in your room and they have soaps and shampoos. You paid for them. They're free. Give a little go, you know, hop in there, go crazy, little hot water, little shampoo. Oh my <laughs> God. It was just like, so please people who are attending festivals and attending cons in your own life, be as stinky as you want. You don't want to bathe. Hey, that's your right. However, when we're all together, when we're forming that awesome community, be a good community member and take a fucking shower. You know, I can understand PSG. <laughs> like it's an outdoor space. You want to roll around the dirt, you'd be messy, whatever. Okay, it's camping. You're in an indoor space. You have a fucking motel room. Use the goddamn shower. Well, that's another thing, too, right? It's like, how the hell are they getting so stinky if the con is indoors with AC? That's well, what I want to I mean, know. Obviously, no. obviously no. You, you did not attend Tell Elwood's workshop to embrace <laughs> all of your body <laughs> fluids. And odors and so forth. Ew. But actually, you know, you're, you're, you're inside, yes, and there's air conditioning, yes, but it's a big hotel, and you are literally rushing everywhere. I mean, you, you seriously are. And it was funny, too, because, you know, like with the, the elevators, um, so many people were there, and so many people were using the elevators that we actually temporarily broke one. Gosh. And they actually had to have a guy stand at the elevators and count how many people get on and then prevent more people from getting on. Um, because the uh, <laughs> the whole uh, – the, there were just so many people there. And, and, and they, that four elevators were simply not enough for all the people that were there. Wow. So, I mean, I was rushing around and everything. And by the end of the day, I, I definitely felt sweaty and stinky. But, you know, I made sure to use deodorant because I was rooming with Kara. And, Somehow and I don't I think to be you nice. need somebody's eye water. <laughs> no, probably not. Maybe I said something that, that, that made their eyes water. Because <laughs> um, uh, I had the, the surprise PNC introduction that, that, that Jason called us up for, <laughs> which was fun. And, uh, and then I was on one of Jason's panels where, where he, he decided to dispense with the easy questions. So that was fun. Um, <laughs> Um, oh, but the, the coolest thing, other than Jason throwing surprise questions at people, um, which was fun, uh, the really the coolest thing that, that happened while I was there was the Hindu American Foundation was there. And they had uh, a, a panel, a couple of different panels, and they had uh, a ritual. And they were there doing sort of outreach. Um, to to work with pagans for uh, religious rights activism and, and for education and and that was really interesting you know uh, I went to the the uh, panel that was called um, that was called uh, our Hindus pagan and our pagans Hindu and I thought you know with a title like that this could go any number of directions. I was like, this could be really good. This could be really bad. Either way, it's going to be interesting. And um, so I went there and it was really, really fascinating. They, uh, you know, they started off giving just like a brief, brief overview of Hinduism and talking about the commonalities between our two movements and um, talking about the, the challenges that they face with um, uh, forced conversion and, and coercion and um, in, in in India and um, and their challenges with uh, maintaining their their traditional re uh, culture and religion while they're here in the U.S. Uh, for people who have immigrated here, and then they opened up to questions and and some of the the questions and the answers to the questions were fascinating. The the most fascinating one was someone stood up and said that you know their I think it was either their grandfather or their great grandfather had been Native American and had been forced to go into the boarding schools and had lost a lot of their culture um, through, through forced conversion and, and, and indoctrination. And uh, so she said that, you know, for her family, the issue of cultural appropriation was huge. And she wanted to know how they felt about pagans uh, working with, worshiping, praying to, reverencing um, Hindu gods. And uh, the, the same question I would have. 
and their response um, was was really quite quite fascinating. They said that if you're not commercially making money off of our religion, then we embrace you. Uh, of course, we want you to pray to Ganesha, you know, um, and and, I, and that was sort of fascinating to me that that they were they genuinely felt that our our our, our two uh, groups had a lot in common and that we we had a lot that we could do for each other and help each other um, because if I'm right at at current uh, at current estimates we outnumber Hindus in the United States I I think I think because Actually, is that right a Jason? Bigger than us. Are they? A little bit bigger than us. Well, I know well, the conservative number I mean, is one million pagans, but then I, I've recently heard that that sort of um, may be a very low number. I don't. You well, know more about that than I, mean, I do. Prob- well, I mean, I guess it's just it's all a guessing game, right? Because they don't, we don't do census, uh, and the census in America in the United States doesn't like list religion, so. Uh, I mean, according to census data, there's between there's like maybe there's like around two two point five million Hindus in the United States, and there's according to those same numbers, there's about a million or so like modern pagans, and that's if you like lump all the pagans together. So, I mean, I guess it depends on what you, how you define pagan, and you know maybe maybe those numbers are are you know low estimate, and there's more pagans. I don't know. Right. It's a, it's an ongoing, it's an ongoing question. But certainly, uh, what the the one thing that, and in fact, I'm going to have on the Wild Hunt, I'm going to have a guest post coming up from Mihir Megani from the Hindu American Foundation, who ran one of the Hindu Hindu uh, pagan dialogue sessions, and uh, to talk about um, to talk about Hindu pagan dialogue and the things that we have in common and what the future is for Hindus and pagans working together, like politically and, uh, and socially. And I, I think that there's a lot of optimism and I think that there's actually, there's a lot that the two communities can really help each other out with. Um, so I, I think it's, I think it's been very positive. I mean, leaving aside the whole, the idea of numbers, if we combine forces, we're, we're, we're that much bigger, you know, politically speaking, but, uh, but yeah, it, but yeah, I, I think it was the whole. I mean, I was very excited personally about the Hindu pagan dialogue stuff because first it was just so positive, you know. I mean, I was like, you know, is this going to go bad? Is this going to turn into something? And it just, it was really great. And uh, you know, they were really positive and like they were really happy about pagans like wanting to be down with the Hindus and and vice versa. So. I feel yeah, good about it. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I got a chance to 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 speak to to Mahir um, just briefly, and um, and he he wanted to talk to me about maybe doing some sort of joint thing, giving Hindu and pagan perspectives on issues like pluralism and uh, conversion. So so hopefully I will be having that conversation with him later this week. So the whole thing was um, was really very positive because that's always been sort of a question, you know that's been out there is do other other indigenous groups consider themselves pagan and we have a reluctance to embrace them um and but the, the this particular you know event and this particular hindu organization was was uh was, was very positive about how how much we have in common and, and how much we have to gain by working together so um yeah, yeah. and carol was telling me that up in um in minneapolis st paul that uh that there's actually a lot of uh, cooperation going on between them, because uh, they, um, especially in the past couple of generations, the Hindu community has really been focusing on creating community centers and, and, and temples. Here in Georgia, we have an absolutely gorgeous temple in Lilburn, and it's, it's it's beautiful. You know, you're you're going down Jimmy Carter Boulevard, and it's like strip mall and strip mall and strip mall and fast food and fast food and fast food and this huge white shining stone temple, you know, rises up over the Walgreens, and it's just it's it's gorgeous. So um so so there's a lot I think our our communities could learn from each other too. So yeah, it was exciting. And it should be. I just want to point out really quick that. Um, 
that as far as the Hindu American Foundation, they're they're kind of they kind of represent a sort of younger generation of Hindus who were, you know, some. I mean, there have been old, some of the older generations of Hindus are very reluctant about being labeled pagan or being labeled as polytheists, uh, and you know, part of that is just because there's been so much anti you know Hindu sentiment and you know the the you know specter of like colonialism and the idea that you know that that you know western people don't respect hinduism and and i think that the the younger generations have a very different attitude so and they're they're much more open and, and expansive and 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 totally okay with pagans and hindus you know working together yeah you know it was it was interesting when they were talking a lot of the times they um they would reference god and and they you know and it was a very sort of monotheistic thing and 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 that was interesting but then when once we started asking you know people were standing up and asking specific questions um this one lady whose name I I cannot remember but she was a lovely speaker um she spoke very passionately about her relationships to the different hindu deities that that really resonated with me as a polytheist so i thought it was interesting that they had the two <clears throat> sort of the two language sets to to talk about and describe their religion, and because uh, I, I know pagans who are like that, who you know, on one hand they can they can speak in a very polytheistic way, and then on the other hand, they uh, they just sort of default to like goddess or or higher power. Yeah. And we have a Nels. Hi, Nels. Uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good. It was good to see you at Pentheacon. Yeah, it was a great experience. Yeah, I, I was wondering if you had a good time. Well, it, it's it's a totally different experience than a outdoor festival that I have a lot more experience with, but. But uh, it was a wonderful time. We got to connect with a lot of good people, and and it was it was wonderful. Excellent. Yeah, I have to say that when we did the introduction to uh, the the Pagan Newswire Collective, Nels was the most professional of all of us. He came in a suit. Well, it, it it was a hard choice to make. I had brought it, and I thought, I don't know, should I wear this? But you know, I <laughs> I had bought it, so I thought, I, and I brought it along, so I better damn wear it. So there it was. Yeah, he made us all look. Uh, I, I I don't even remember that. It was so early. I think my mind just is kind of blanked out what everybody was wearing. <laughs> I'm I'm just it was, I'm just it was like you know Sunday morning at nine a.m. I'm just happy anybody showed up. I was like, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, I, the the one thing I missed is that, you know, the I mean, we did the meet and greet, and and you know, there were several of the presentations, but you know, I wish we had just spent some time to just hang together and talk, you know, just PNC people about what what we're doing. Yeah, I actually, actually, I totally agree. I wish. Go ahead, Star. Oh, I was just going to say. Actually, I, I feel bad that um, my myself and Karen Cassette did that a little bit, and we sort of uh, we sort of left you boys out of the picture. And I I apologize for that. We should have snagged you for lunch at some point. You know what? You could you could have had a you could have announced it on Twitter. <laughs> and everybody would. If I'd had a smartphone. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, if I'd had a smartphone, I totally would have. But I wasn't going to run back upstairs to my laptop just to tweet. I'm, I'm thinking in the future, when we, if, we, if we're able to get a, as, a, 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 as a big a collective of PNC volunteers and folks together, I think instead of having like a meet and greet or something, I would just want to have a big meeting where we just kind of sit down and, you know, chat and share knowledge and... You know, I think you know. Yeah, I totally agree with Nels. I I wish we wish we had a I had like maybe set aside a dinner or something, you know. But uh, but yeah, I mean, live and learn. I, I mean, Panthea Khan's energy is so crazy that it's it's easy to get you know just sucked up in the vortex and miss opportunities. 
Yeah, at, at one point I decided that I was going to sit down and check my email and and I was going to blog and you know, I I found a nice quiet corner of the lobby. And then uh one of the people from Cherry Hill Seminary came up and we just had this fascinating discussion and I never actually did any of that. So yeah. And, and that's that's how the that's how the weekend went. Very little sleep, lots of awesome. But yeah, if you definitely if you haven't if you haven't been to PantheaCon before, I think I think I think every pagan should experience it at least once because it's it's really different from an outdoor festival, and you know which because you know because often outdoor festivals are like a week long, and they're they're a, or they're a bit more laid back as far as the energy goes. You know, there's lots of time to just kind of sit around and hang out with people, and uh, you know, and it's. It's a different vibe, you know. PantheaCon's much more, you know, stuff happening all at once, everywhere, all the time, you know. Well, I mean, yeah, there was a lot of, well, there was a lot of wheeling and dealing going on there too, and people trading business cards, and um, I didn't know that many pagans had business cards <laughs> <laughs> until I started collecting them. So, PCP will take yeah. credit for that trend. <laughs> we did yeah, that was we do. We've been doing that for years. But yeah, that was really cool because you know, there were people from publishers there and there were authors there and I know of projects that got started there just from people talking in hallways. Um and uh yeah, I mean the, the the atmosphere was very much it was very energetic and it was very positive and it was very much about let's create awesome new things going forward um, I, I heard about a lot of really interesting projects getting started there um, Keith Orn Coyle is doing a a correct me if I'm wrong Jason but it's uh, a couple of ebook imprints um, that, that, that sound really amazing one's going to focus on um, uh, republishing uh, material that is no longer in print, and, uh, and and that was really cool. And um, I know I know several people were were going around working on a project to record stories of the uh, stories of pagan elders, um, and and that sort of caught like wildfire. And I'm I'm not exactly certain where that that project uh, has its. Well, its that's the thing. Every book. time we mention it's like that's a great project. Okay, pagan elders, you want to do this? Uh, call me, call me next week. <laughs> it's just like well, it never, actually, ever freaking happens. Well, I've got, I've actually got some pagan elders who are interested in doing it. It's just me getting to them with with audio equipment on a weekend that's both good for us hasn't exactly happened yet. And and at uh and at PantheaCon, I I actually had the intention of doing that. I bought, I borrowed Dave's amazing audio recorder, and um, I was busy. I didn't take it out of the box. There was just so much going on. So, you know, one thing I thought was in at PantheaCon in print were, were sort of similar to Pagan Spirit Gathering. But there was actually a lot more openness about the use of media. The, 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 they had official rules, but it was, it was, there was, what didn't seem really to be much enforcement. It was, um, it was a very relaxed, relaxed environment. I, I know that there were, uh, like Llewellyn was actually doing some some video recording, like in hallways, and there were people walking in the background, and and no one seemed to really get um, upset about it, and uh, that was kind of cool. Yeah, and like a certain um, other event, I'd be like, "You're taking video of the sky with this information. They'll be able to triangulate all location." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that we know any well, yeah, events I mean, are like that. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I mean, Pentecon sort of a different event, and um. I, I would definitely say that it's much more of an out of. I mean, it's out of Hilton. The staff isn't pagan. Yeah, you know, well, I mean, the, the guys running the shut is Pantheon. Is, Acon is the CES or the Detroit Auto Show of the pagan community. It is the show that sets sets in motion everything that's going to happen for the rest of the year. Yeah, that's that's very much true. So I mean, it's it's not the sort of thing that you go to if you're deeply in the closet, um, yeah. if you're if you're very very concerned. Um, so in that way, I mean, for me that was interesting. But I kind of, to some degree, wondered if there were people who felt some discomfort with that. Um, but uh, 
But yeah, wonder, so that was just, wonder, that was just other conferences ever had to deal with that problem. Like, <laughs> like a Detroit Auto Show. Oh my God, they might know I like looking at cars. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you well part, now I'm sure the Detroit Auto Show has had problems where, um, you know, people were were pictured looking at cars with people who were not their wives or husbands. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but that happens so, everywhere. So anytime there's a public event, there's always an element of, of concern about privacy. But um so yeah, I found that the, the difference in, in the way people use media and their, their feelings about the media were different. But um but I know that there are a lot of people at, at Pagan Sphere Gathering that getting away from technology is a is a big draw to, to going there. It's a it's a week long camping festival. Maybe there's something about people being forced to wear clothes that make them more open to media stuff. I don't know. Yeah, but you didn't see the clothes. <laughs> <laughs> there was some, my favorite was this guy. He was so cool. He wore it was like a pair of jammies though. He wore this <laughs> devil costume, bright red, and yes! I was standing in line talking with him. And he was sitting there, and I couldn't. Was, I turned around, and I was like, I said, I just want to let you know for the record, we don't worship you. <laughs> and uh and yeah and he was kind of hoping the change from his coffee would be 666 it was funny it was cool there were a lot of people like uh in in, in costume type things um I, I definitely saw a couple of furries there i was gonna say how many so, so it's suit and tie yeah. and cosplay <laughs> nice well, like it's everything the ingredients thereof from I like ritual to attire is- to 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 pajamas <laughs> with little devil horns yeah I mean it's it's the big melting pot of paganism I mean seriously I encountered pagans there that you know that I, it never occurred to me that that sort of type and style of paganism existed um, it was cool yeah what, what Star said <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to add <laughs> I'll just say what Star said. In fact, in fact, Dave, I, I want you to just, just sample this right now. I totally agree with what Star said, and then you can just kind of loop that whenever Star says something, and then you'll be set. <laughs> and you can pretend I'm on, I'm like, I'm guesting on every show that Star's on. <laughs> <laughs> well, then let me go ahead and say that you know, <laughs> the first question on the panel that Jason lobbed at all of us was how we dealt with new media and monetization. And we were all Dang. just like, Dang. <laughs> Thanks for starting off with a nice easy question to warm us up. <laughs> you know? We all were just like terrified. We were like, shit, what's this? What's this I was next totally going to give you guys a softball question to start off. But then like <laughs> the, in the intros, everybody kept bringing up money in the intros. And I was like, all right, well, you guys want to talk about money. I'm going <laughs> to do it. So I was just like. <laughs> Secretly, PCG so just- owns the record label that puts out Kelly Mae's records. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Kelly Mae's and fabulous. Kelly Mae's. Just you know, wait. Was- we're going to interview her to, um, <laughs> later next month. Yeah, we are. We are? We what? are. Yes. <laughs> oh. She responded? Yes. Was she upset? She doesn't oh. know yet. No, February was really busy for her, and she would really like us to interview her. So Holy all our shit. readers can... Uh, Meet Kelly Mays. All the readers. Yes, all the readers of PCP, <laughs> the Pagan Center podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you should do it. She would have to pick the one media we don't do. We're yeah. on the radio, um, we're on the internet, <laughs> we're audio, we're video. No. You do have a readers. blog. <laughs> you do have a blog. Um, but you, actually, it was funny from that, that, that whole money question. Apparently, I was quoted on Twitter. Someone said that the best. Uh, quote from that panel was the part where I was like trying to formulate something coherent to say about Jason's question. I was just like, uh, pagan some money. Yeah, it's it's just kind of weird. He <laughs> <laughs> like quoted that on Twitter. That, yeah, I saw that retweet. That, that talk actually got, uh, that t- whole panel got recorded, by the way, so it'll either be showing up on the Wild Hunt or on Thorn Coil's podcast in the near future. So... You know, that was one interesting thing. You know, there were a lot of amazing panels, and I don't think uh, most of them got recorded, which is kind of a shame because, oh. I mean, there's, 
just well, I mean a lot of the Panthe Acom is. really don't want people showing up to their events. So I think the solution to that is record everything and then nobody will have to show up. But that'll have the opposite effect of oh my well, god, these are awesome recordings. Let's all show up. That's <laughs> yep. that's I, how I, like I found out about it. <laughs> you know, this, I heard this I heard year the, for the I'm sorry, go ahead, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with whatever Star is saying. No, I, <laughs> I, I think that uh, I was just going to say this is the first year the Pantheon had a media department and they actually offered to record panels and presentations for people. And apparently they were so inundated with requests, they just didn't expect it. And there was no, and they couldn't get to everything that like everybody wanted recording re recorded. So like, well, Jason, what uh, you should do, you should I, hook up the Pound Pagan podcasters with them. This way, all the podcasters, where all podcasting gear can show up and pick up the slack. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I will happily get you Go in touch for it, with Dave. their media, oh, yeah, well, we their <laughs> media liaison, and uh, yeah, tell her that you're you want to help, and she will. I'm sure she'll be glad to plug you in. Maybe you can even get a discount on your on your registration. Yeah. Whatever. We'll figure something Sweet. out. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's kind of interesting because the, the organizer was looked – and she was mainly concerned because she was afraid of outgrowing the hotel, that, that people advertising and talking about the event were going to make it grow. And, you know, and, and, and her solution may in the future be like, you know, Dragon Con here in Atlanta eventually just took over five hotels. They just, they just kept taking over hotels as they grew. Um, but it was funny that she, she kind of expressed some reservations about that because the way I originally learned about PantheaCon is because Jason and, and Aaron Roy and Lori uh, were both tweeting about it. And then Thorne um, had recorded a panel that she was on, and it was on her podcast. And I listened to the podcast, and mm -hmm. I was thinking, oh, my goodness, she was in a room with all of these amazing authors and leaders that I've heard of. And they were talking about really interesting things, and, you know, I definitely have to go to this. So, um, so yeah, I, I think there's definitely more of an incentive to go if you've heard some of the things that go on there. And, uh you know, and, and like I said, most of it, you know, the, the panels were amazing, but then a lot of it was just the interaction in between events and and skipping events because you were having an amazing conversation. So so you just decided not to go to that workshop you had circled in your in your booklet. I've actually been dying to ask you guys a question, which is, you know, um, how how was the the vendor room and I mean, I saw the layout of it on uh, Pantheacon's site, and, and it was so very, just beautifully organized. How did it actually look when you guys went through there, if you had a chance to go through there? Um, I went through it a couple times. It's, it's, pretty, it's nice. It's nicely done, and it's, it's, like, it's pretty big. I mean, I don't know. I, I haven't been to a lot of conventions, like, you know, like fantasy sci-fi conventions and stuff, so I don't know how to gauge how that room compares to other conventions, but it's certainly the biggest pagan convention, like, like, you know, uh, I guess was it merchant room I've ever seen. And it's very well run and they have, they have Pantheacon staff there like the whole time, you know, running things. And there's tons and tons of like great gifts and, you know, goodies that you'd want, you know, it's very nice. I, I liked it. enjoyed it. I give it a, I give it an 8.5. <laughs> <laughs> on your, on your <laughs> arbitrary <laughs> scale <laughs> yes it, it, had, it was a good merch room and I could dance to it mm, it's the pixel scale <laughs> well you know I, uh, I, I really liked it I, I definitely did not bring enough money um, <laughs> because I, I, I went through it a couple of times but each time it was just like star you, you, you need to leave so that you can eat for the remainder of the trip <laughs> because they had some really amazing things i mean it was um it was a very very tempting area of the of the convention of the con um i i i have found my new athame and uh and i i got their contact information because i i underestimated the uh the temptations of the merchant room <laughs> Just as long as it isn't a Hello Kitty Athame, I think we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that it 
that uh, the merchants did pretty well for themselves. I mean, I'm not just asking because I want to eventually also be a vendor at you know PSG and PentheaCon next year, but um, you know, just you hear a lot of of noise about you know I don't want to pay for services and and spells or or, or not just spells, but I, I don't want to pay for things when it comes to pagan things, and I'm just curious to see what kind of uh, level of business went on actually at the you know in well, the merchant you, room. Well, my you know it was interesting because oh well, well it was interesting because Oberyn Zell uh, was there with his myth- mythic images, um, and he had a vendor booth booth, and he wasn't presenting. He came just to vend. So from that. It's my assumption that that they did well. It was definitely always very busy there, um, and that's just my impression. And I think Nels wanted to say something. Yeah. Did you want to pipe in there, Nels? Well, I, I mean, I often, most often, merchant at festivals, and I had actually first heard of PantheaCon because you know many uh, uh, presenters from out there that I talked to said, "Oh, you should come out and merchant and." And my impression was it was really high quality uh, work there, and a lot of it very artistically done. And uh, I spent some time with uh, a friend that was vending there who uh, did very well, and you know had only the highest praise for the uh, uh, merchant coordinator and how they ran the show and. Um, so I think that's something they've got right there for the people that show up and merchant. And and personally, I've seen a lot of people dropping a lot of money. This is this is not the this is not a Midwest event, you know. Or this is like where I mean, where I've seen events where people like pagans aren't spending a lot of money. But PantheaCon is definitely an event where people are dropping a lot of bones. So it's. <laughs> You know, it's like people. I people spend a lot of money at PantheaCon. It's you know, I, I think the vendor room does very well if you can get in because I, I think there's always competition to get in. Mm. I mean, it's it's good to know because then you can see that the the community is supporting itself. You know what I mean? Food doesn't mm-hmm. get on the table by magic. You know. Not yet. Keep trying. Yeah, though. I, I, I tried to reword that. I'm trying to reword that. I was like, oh, I should. Uh. Oh, this deer, he just wandered right onto my kitchen table. This is nice. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I play World of Warcraft, and um, if you're a mage, <laughs> you can summon okay. these things. Just to let you know. <laughs> So back to our slow five pagans over here. <laughs> so, so now as we, we talked a little bit about some of the people we met in workshops we went to. Was there anything that really stood out for you that, that you went to? Um, well, uh, I, uh, of the events I went to, almost all of them were really interesting, even the ones that didn't go so well. Uh, so... Um, uh, you know, I was pretty much happy with my experience. I, I guess for me, PantheaCon was more about connecting with people, and uh, I did manage to find the time to both reconnect with old friends there and and the people that, you know, I decided I want to meet. I, I kind of did the business card thing. I would, you know, talk to them briefly and, and introduce myself and give them some contact information. And it's so crazy there. I just thought it was better to get back to them later, you know, next week or the week after. And and then at least they know who I am and, and really talk to them because, you know, it's everyone is on the way to or from something and it's it's hard to pin people down. I, for me, that was the, the highlight of it was just making those connections. Yeah, like my Facebook friend, I think I like I gained like 10 or 12 Facebook new Facebook friends already like a couple of days now after the after the con. <laughs> yeah, sa- same here. People that I'd I'd randomly met there sort of found me on Facebook. And and there were people that I had planned to actually sit down and talk to there. Um I, I had already sort of made plans to sit down and talk to Crystal Blanton and, and Gus Zerga about 
um, different projects, and uh, we just we just realized that that just wasn't going to happen because we were all so busy, and so it was more of a you know uh, shake hands, hug, nice to meet you, and uh, we, we will email later. Well, so. I know I know in the industry that I'm in, usually the way we combat those issues is we actually stay a few days early or late, and we just we devote those days to meetings. Yeah, well, yeah, but on 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 Sunday evening, people were already starting to leave. So, so Monday things were already sort of getting sparse. I do know Cherry Hill Seminary actually had an event there um, the Thursday before that apparently went really, really well. Um, which uh, next year if they have it again, I would like to try to go to that. Well, I, I you know, I guess the the one thing that uh, we really connected with, we went to the Spark Collective ritual on the last night. And because we, we participate in fire circles out here, it was, it was really neat to just see, uh, it was like, oh wow, this is a group that talks the same language. Uh, because even though the, the fire circle movement has kind of started out on the West Coast and then moved all over the country and morphed and changed, and here we were going back to a, a West Coast fire circle group. It was um, it was just like going home. It was just they they talked the same language. They did the same things. It was really familiar, and that was really nice. Yeah, you know that something that I thought was weird, Nels, and and you, you might have thought it was weird too, is that we we couldn't have any fire or incense. And the, the creative ways that people got around that with like the little fake campfires and. Uh, and using like plug-in candles, and 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 they smudge people with unlighted sage. They just like carried the bundle around and and like unlight. You know, it wasn't smoking or anything. They just sort of waved it in front of you. Um, that was interesting. That was that was weird to have pagans without fire. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, the, uh, we've had guests from the Midwest out to Harvest Festival, and they're so. I mean, to us, you know, as long as the fire's under three foot tall, it's fine to leave it unattended, and they're like in shock, you know. <laughs> yeah, that, I think that was something that I did miss. Uh, it being, you know, an indoor pagan conference was was incense and and fire and yeah, cool breezes. Um, it was it was a little it was it, you know when you're used to having a little more atmosphere to your ritual to be in a brightly lit ballroom was odd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, uh, don't worry. You you have PSG coming up in Illinois, Star, and <laughs> you'll you'll yeah. you'll be able to get back outside again. Yeah. And, I mean, it wasn't it I wasn't hope- rituals were bad. It was just it was it was it was a different experience. So. Yeah, definitely. It's a it's a very different vibe, totally. Yeah, see, from from my perspective, it's it's like all the innovative things in modern paganism happens outside in the Midwest, and then you know it kind of leaks over to Pantheacon where it's codified and presented as original material. So that's that's my perspective. <laughs> 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 so no, sort of a sort of a pagan a pagan centric uh, view of, of yeah pagan centric. <laughs> <laughs> someday I'm going to have to visit Paganistan <laughs> and, and and just see these entire entire cities taken over by pagans. <laughs> well, they just they just launched a new indoor fest a new indoor convention Paganicon. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's coming up in March, and uh, John Michael Greer is their like headliner guest. So it was fun to meet him and uh, and get to talk to him in advance. So and um, Orion Foxwood is is here this weekend. So um, uh, there's a, a little bit of the conference is, is coming to Paganistan in the next month or so. Yeah, very cool. Well, I, I, I really enjoyed PantheaCon. I, I, I didn't quite know what to expect. And uh, 
and I was very pleasantly surprised and and uh it, it was very exciting to to be able to sit and uh get to talk to all of these people that you know I'd only gotten to talk to over the internet and I, I'm definitely looking forward to going back next year and um and maybe try to get there a day early and, and catch the cherry hill um event as well next time around if they still have it yeah well they usually have it every year so maybe next year you can go a day early and catch that yeah and there were there were a lot of cherry hill folks there i i met several of them um uh christine hoff kramer was on the the panel with me and she was a a very nice lady and William William Bloomberg. Bloomberg. I, I had a really nice yeah. chat with him. Yeah, he's on the board, and uh, Christina is there is one of the deans. Yeah. I kind of apologize. I, I I don't have like any wild stories for you guys at all. Um. <laughs> That's because PayCon is obviously a very boring conference, and no one should go because you know, the runners of the event really don't want anybody to show up. <laughs> no, not at all. All the I'm more not... reason to do wall to wall media coverage next year. Event PayCon 2012. That's right. PCP is going to be there, and they're going to bring the party bus. <laughs> well, uh, we might. I don't think we're bringing Scurry's party bus, but I think Pagan FM might bring their their live broadcast mobile. Oh, cool! Yeah. So, we'll see what happens. Really? We have we'll a make you guys there like... for that conversation. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I just uh, I just wanted to practice my sucking up skills and just say what an honor it was to meet Peter and and what a, a just a straightforward. Honest guy, he seemed to me. So that's my suck up for the day. <laughs> Peter, <laughs> well, I'm going Peter to diving, that folks. <laughs> Peter diving has entered the room. My, my Peter, impression of Peter diving was that the man has levels of research. Got airport noise, but I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> my my impression was that Peter has levels of resources and deviousness uh, far above beyond what I could have suspected. He was talking to everyone and. And he was he was getting things rolling and and uh, he he was definitely a major mover and shaker behind the scenes there at at Pantheacon. Well, I I, I did a brief. I was shaking. <laughs> <laughs> for for those I, of I you playing a... at home who don't know who Peter Diving is, he's the first officer of the Covenant of the Goddess. By the way. Well, I, I was so impressed with his calm resolve because I, I was interviewing him while he was doing a job guarding the upstairs rooms there and dealing with a young lady who was having the moment of her life because she had forgot her past back at her room. <laughs> and he was just so calm and considerate with her, but firm with her, and he still talked to me. It was amazing. <laughs> Peter, I'm still disappointed, though. I expected stories of debauchery and drinking, and uh, I did not hear any yet. And we see he ran away. He fears me. <laughs> he fears me. He's shamed. Well, He's shamed I don't know himself. for certain, but I, I, I think Peter did party harder than the rest of us. So uh, yeah, but, uh, he. Uh, he's the one who has some party stories. He, so <laughs> oh, I know that he's probably saw more stuff. So. But he was actually very nice. He actually sat and, and chatted with me for a couple of hours and, and let me pick his brain uh, regarding uh, current trends and, and, and paganism and, and his thoughts. So uh, I, I'm very grateful that, that he uh, allowed me to do that. So Did he have any back in my day, we pagans had to march up three hills to get to our circle? <laughs> no, he had no uh, walking for miles in the snow up till both wise stories. But I'm I'm sure that he would be happy to to regale you. And then we had snow. to do it winter shins. <laughs> so um, 
But uh, yeah, and Nels, Nels was busy. I mean, like almost every time I saw Nels, he had his arm around someone, you know, convincing them to let him interview them. Um, <laughs> he, he made me feel like a slacker, which I was. Well, you know, it's it's really hard to interrupt people, and uh, but you know, I managed to do it. I uh, uh, like Evo. I just kind of grabbed him about five minutes before his presentation and got a two-minute interview from him. And I said, well, just just consider this a way of distracting you so you don't feel nervous. And and that worked, but, you know, it doesn't work with everybody. And you, you do have to just jump in and grab somebody's attention if you want to get any words from them. Yeah, definitely. You, you kind of just, like, have to say hi to people while you have the chance. There was... Um, yeah, that's Teeth and Coil and I kept like passing each other in the hallway and we'd like wave. <laughs> and that was like it. It would just be like, hey, and we'd be going in different directions. So. <laughs> so so Peter, they were hoping that you had a story of partying and debauchery because all the rest of us were pretty pretty boring and laid back. <laughs> I have a story of partying and debauchery. Ah, good. You saved the day. So I decided to go to this party at night with a friend of mine from the Florida uh, COG. And I hold on a second. And the airport takes over. (laughs) (laughs) His story is a matter of national security. (laughs) (laughs) If he tells the story, he's going to end up getting, you know, He's going to have to go through TSA again if he tells the story. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell the story, but I know I'm going to get some feedback from the pagan community. <laughs> pagan TSA. So I get to this party in the evening with this friend of mine, and we're hanging out, and she says, pull your shirt up. Okay, I'm pagan. Like, I care. So I pull my shirt up. She's like, lay down. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Next- Next thing I know, there is honey being poured all over my torso. And Sweet. Awesome. Somebody yells, cake. And all of a sudden, there are like 30 people licking the honey off. Like, <laughs> okay. And at this point, I <laughs> my head. I can't even see who it is. I have no clue. And the interesting thing is it didn't get really a reaction from me at all. I think it was more about them than it was me. But it was definitely a once-in-a-lifetime event. <laughs> Proud. Once you cake, you'll never be cake again. <laughs> wow. I love so, that story. So there's your debauchery from Path Dick God. So you were really busy uh, working on projects in the background. Yeah, um, I was. I was trying to put together some stuff. Um, and, and you told me a story... You told me a story about being in the cog suite um, with a bunch of elders. Do you want to tell that story? I'm not sure it's the same story. Is it kind of about my reaction to that and how I felt about that? Yeah, yeah. All right, so they're doing kind of a history of cog or interfaith. I don't remember which one it was, but I'm kind of looking around the room, and there's M. Maka Nightmare, and there's Starhawk, and Andrus Corbin, and a number of our cog elders that have been here since, you know, this whole thing was founded. I cog, I mean the neo-pagan movement, you know, in the early 70s and late 60s. And I'm just, I'm standing back going, okay, I really have no business in this group, but, you know, it's okay. And it was just amazing to see that generation of people all in the same room, because now they all have founded their different traditions and that kind of thing. But I was just kind of overwhelmed with, you know, just, I don't know, I guess kind of the magical energy and knowledge there. Is that the story, Star? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you you described it to me as they were discussing the day they reclaimed witchcraft, and I thought that was a great phrase. Yeah, and I mean, that really was kind of what they were talking about. They were talking about, you know, when this thing came together here in Northern California in, you know, the early 70s, and they started talking about forming an organization to protect witches and... You know, this all these different people from these different paths, Andrew and Andrus and Starhawk and Z Budapest and everybody, all were part of this one little initial core group in, in the early days. And just getting an insight into that was like, wow, 
you know, and it kind of made me think about pagans in the future 20 years from now, 30 years from now, they're not going to have access to that kind of experience. So I felt kind of privileged. Yeah, I mean, by, by that time, you know, it'll all have been recorded in podcast form. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just don't add the cake story to that. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> <laughs> Audio bite. You're stuck but with it now. It was Good. definitely, Pantheon itself was definitely just a... I don't know. It was a roller coaster of amazing experiences, which was really cool. And then I had to stop talk to Star for a while, but it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I was uh, pretty laid back, but I picked his brain on on various things. So, um, but yeah, it was cool. You know, the weird thing about it though was sleeping in a hotel where rituals are going on like all day long was was weird. For me, it was like trying to sleep during a thunderstorm. There was all this energy bouncing around, and um, that was odd. I'm totally there with you. If I had one experience about it that was just really unusual for me is I'm used to pagan festivals in the woods where I can put my hands in the dirt, and that just wasn't available. So it was a very different kind of very intense intellectual magical energy that didn't have that kind of grounding piece that I usually get by being able to like go out in the woods naked and hang out. Only naked yeah. because I'm middle aged, so you know I don't do that with anybody. I might frighten them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um, I, I actually I dreamed about rituals all the first night, and then the next night, for some really weird reason, I dreamed that I I, I cleaned um someone's bathtub, and they had like gummy bears and stuff stuck in their bathtub, like smushed. <laughs> And yeah, so it was, it was just one of those weird dreams that like all of this weird energy just like focused into a, a very <laughs> bizarre dream. Weird. Pantheacon, the only place where a gummy bear bathtub is not unusual. <laughs> <laughs> so Jason just, still on here? No, he ran away. Did he? Because I just cannot tell you how impressed I was with the job he did, especially as he's interacting in the cog suite with all the elders and stuff. They're kind of looking at him going, oh, new guy, technology, change. And he was just awesome. So I was impressed. Yeah, Jason Jason did a fabulous job, and so did Nels and Kara. I mean, PNC Minnesota, you know, I'm not trying to diss any other any other bureau, but PNC Minnesota just kicks ass. Yeah, all it's you other best. bureaus, step up to the plate because we yeah. never talk about any of y'all. We only talk about <laughs> PNC Minnesota because they're full of wind. Uh, they, yep. they really are. It's just they, more they, fucking up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, seriously. I mean, they they just do a fabulous job, and they've they've definitely set the bar for all the rest of us. You know, it's no longer. You know, we, we, we've had discussions about whether we need to be like the AP or Reuters and, and you know, different books of style. And, you know, there, there's been a lot of discussions about what we should be. And now it's all just sort of boiled down that, you know, well, we need to at least be as good as PNC Minnesota. Well, I think the thing that, that happens with PNC Minnesota is they didn't wait around back. for us to agree on what manual of style to do. Or, or what format the website's going to be in. No, they just kind of ran out and started doing stuff, and that, that's why they're full of win. Yep. They do stuff. That's the difference. They're not planning bureaucracies. You know. They don't talk about doing stuff either. If I get one more email of that, we are planning to talk about potentially, possibly thinking doing about something. something. <laughs> I'm going to flip. <laughs> well, I mean, they have their organizational stuff, too, and they were able to share that with us, uh, how they do things, and it was very helpful for me. And so I, I appreciated that, Nels, that, that you and Kara took the time to talk about the way you were organized and the way you handled issues. Um, it, it, was, I'm, it was very helpful for me, and I'm sure it was very helpful for the other bureau people. Well, hopefully they actually listen to the damn advice. That's all I got to say. Well, it, it was kind of funny because the when we originally wanted to meet with this, you know, larger group that were, was interested in the Bureau, you know, their response was, well, we really don't want to have meetings, so we don't want to meet with you. And, and so we'll just withdraw our site. And then the amazing thing is, is we didn't have any meetings then because we didn't need to talk about anything. So, so we didn't have meetings. 
you know, we just did it. Um, you know, but, but I just want to say, for me, you know, uh, Kara has been uh, really uh, helpful to, to deal with, you know, there, there's been issues that have come up and, and uh, you know, there's been times when we've gotten a huge response and then no response and she uh, has really helped me to learn to be just calm about the whole thing and realize that, that you know, the most important thing is to get stuff out there that is reasonably professional and, you know, let the chips fall where they may. Um, and and just keep doing it, for sure. The, the more you put out there, the more, the easier it is for more things to come. Well, I, just, I just like the fact that you guys are out doing stuff. I like that. I appreciate people that actually do stuff. I just get frustrated when organizations go in this idiot loop of planning for stuff that they're not doing yet. So, just my personal rant. I really like PNC Minnesota because you guys do stuff. And you, guys, you like you said, you do have that professional quality. I mean, for a very long time, if there was any video in the pagan community, it was coming from Magic TV, and even they've abandoned their quality standards. And so it's like I almost feel obligated to contribute pagan video because, well, looking around YouTube, all of it sucks in some way, with the very rare exception of, like, the, the couple of videos PNC Minnesota has posted. Yeah, somebody, that's somebody good. Somebody that, that, you know, one of our listeners posts something really intelligent. You know, and that does happen, but it's just not a regular thing, and that's kind of sad, you know. It's like, we have, like, pwned podcasting, and yet in the video arena, pagans suck. <laughs> <sighs> there was a Star Foster video that was a highlight. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was that was. You have no idea how low quality and and rushed and and just randomly pulled together that that was. And I actually did have complaints about the quality on that one. They were valid. the The music was too loud. Um, but uh, that was my my first attempt at video. And and if you've noticed, I I have not uh, exactly that media since so um hey star but, if you'll remember mine came out about two minutes after yours and let's put them side by side yours was high quality <laughs> <laughs> you did you did you totally you totally beat me to the punch i was a little disappointed actually <laughs> yeah except mine sucked and yours looked halfway quasi-professional <laughs> but um no, yours yours was awesome. Um, but yeah, I think you know the the fact that they did have people doing video at Pantheon, I thought was really really interesting. And you know, I, I certainly plan to go back next year, and and, and I, I hope other PNC folk will be there. And it would be interesting for us to maybe next year try that out as a as a place for us to to try to go into video. Uh, as an entire organization and yeah. where we can work together and support each other. That would be cool. Yeah, I, I would I mean, be interested in doing that. Yeah, I mean, if, if Circle Sanctuary doesn't want to let PSG be the, the premier event for video, well, we can have other events you know, take up that honor. You know, it's not a really hard thing to do. I mean, we did mm -hmm. some decent coverage of uh, CNC PVD and the really cool things because they were so open with the media. Uh, a lot of people were taking video. And you see all these people around taking video, and the thing that always bothered me when going to a lot of places, you see a lot of people taking video, but you're like, well, where the hell am I ever going to see this video? But the cool thing is YouTube, CNC, PBD, 2010, holy crap, everybody shows up, including our little road trip, so. Right. Well, we're, we're, we're talking to, to uh, Circle Sanctuary this year about the possibility of doing video, so yeah. so that may still be a possibility. But, you know, P PSG is a, is a, it's a different sort of event, and, and it's definitely a place where people who are in the closet feel comfortable going. So yeah. whatever we do, we just have to make sure that we're very careful to, to respect people's privacy. And, oh, and I think that's not about violating yeah. people's privacy, but at the same time, not everybody going to PSG is in the closet. Right. So, yeah. So I think that's really the main concern of, of how to do this and do this well and, and do it so that we're yeah. we're being respectful of people's privacy. So, um, yeah, but there's got to be some in between. You know, it's well, we are essentially but, setting up an outdoor closed off media tent. If yeah, that that, that's like, then, you know, it comes down to, yeah, this is screw this. Some other events going to get this honor. 
Well, yeah. yeah, but you know, we're we're also their guests, so so you know, we're we're, we're working yeah, with them on it. And if they want to let us do is audio and vlogging, that's fine. We'll let somebody else take up that as being the premier video event of paganism. Mm-hmm. You know, I got the sense listening to Selena Fox talk during one of the presentations about pagan media that she was like, and this kind of took me out of left field that she was like really supportive of the pagan media and was happy that they were going to be there next year and stuff. And I was like, really? Because that's not the impression I've gotten. But you know, I think she'll probably <laughs> let you do anything. Uh, you know, you're right. There are a lot of pagans who are not out there, and then there are those who are out and are naked. So, you know, other than that. I- <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Selena is, is awesome, and she's, she's definitely been a big supporter of us. And I think that's something that's really given us a lot of credibility is the fact that we did go to PSG and that we did work within their guidelines, and we were of... Not only did we do the things that we wanted to do, but we were also of service to Circle Sanctuary and the work that we did. And so it's been awesome to have Selena as as a supporter. Um, and, I, and I think that's given us a lot of credibility in, in the greater pagan community. And I just want to get something clear, because there's a lot of misreading, misinterpretation of a lot of things I say. I like making fun of the silly media rules, and I like making fun of a lot of things. But ultimately, when we're there, we obey their rules. That is just yeah. how simple it is. We are their guests. We follow a guest host relationship rules, and it really is that simple. Mm. We yeah, make and, complain and a little good... bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm I'm the world's biggest grump, so so yeah, I complain a lot about pagans. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's gonna be cool though because I, there's gonna be more of us. I think uh, this coming year. And uh, and I think the same thing will happen with PantheaCon. I think next year, you know, we had a handful of people from the PNC, um, and there was a handful of podcasters. And I, I really think that next year, there's there's just going to be more of us, and uh, and that's going to be a really really cool thing. That was something, you know, the 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 media. Um, workshops that were there were were hosted by one was a panel hosted by Jason one was hosted by um, I forget the gentleman's name but he was the uh, he has the modern witch podcast um, so the only really discussions of media were, were being led by people who were active in it and so the more active we are in these festivals and events um, the, the more people are aware of not only our presence, but of the issues regarding pagan media. And, and that's sort of a fascinating thing. And that's going to be a cool thing for, for PSG because, you know, we're talking about different workshops and things that, that we can do. Um, and that'll be a good way, not just for us to network and connect, but also to interact with the, uh, the community on, on the issues of pagan media. It's also about posterity, you know, I mean, if there's some, there are people who don't want to be identified and, 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 you know, elders who don't want to come out because they remember when, you know, their house got firebombed or the tire slashed or, or other they horrible things. They remember when they owned slaves. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's also that element of things change. Things always change. But if you don't have a record of it, people are not going to be able, especially the, the future generations, are not going to be able to grasp that struggle nor appreciate it you know oh, yeah, it is about doc i mean that is one thing that me and selena fox completely agree on is is yes we need to document things for posterity and that's why she you know she, the whole recording of the history of psg was not exactly an idea we had it was selena fox's suggestion i thought well that's simple enough we just hook up a recorder bum 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 it's really easy to technically do and it's going to be really cool let's do it so we did it <laughs> it was you know, mm-hmm. And it does one of the cool things of working with the events is just make sure that uh, we can record things. I mean, uh, we don't want to become like the Native American community, and I don't mean to pick on them, but they just don't document stuff. And now they've had this revival, and their beliefs are in decline, and they're going to get lost again. I mean, yeah. it's not enough you lost it once, but to lose it a second fucking time. It's yeah, time to document it before it all goes away. Yeah, or something you know, we- happens. We have a lot of pagans trying to reconstruct their 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 native indigenous traditions, um, and and actually a lot of the Native American community is going through sort of the same thing where they're having to reconstruct things that have been lost, um, and I I find that fascinating. Um, I mean that's that's the thing I like about a lot of pagan well a lot of festivals in general are really open to the videotape and 
you know, we are working very closely with the, you know, we, we are working, you know, I'm trying to work through Amber to make sure that we can document as much of uh, the Native American festival we're going to uh, over Beltane uh, in a respectful way. You know, there, there's a lot there to document. And, and what's nice is a lot of them are, are more than willing to try to preserve this, not only so we could use it for the, the Native American Museum and use it as advertising, but because this is something that's lost. And, you know, especially on the East Coast, to be able to have some of the dances and some of the regalia taking videos of and being able to interview some of these demonstrators and what tribe they're from and where they learned what they did is amazing information that will be priceless for the future generations. Well, and, then, yep. and, and in that particular geographic locality, there are things that are only done in that geographic area, and you can't research that on the Internet. Yeah. And it would be nice to have that stuff documented, not just for the local people that, you know, that's my family that did that. It, for just overall people that are looking to do research or just curious about things, it's nice to have this stuff documented. I mean, it would have been awesome to have, like, rituals that were done in the past and have video footage of it to see how rituals have changed over the decades, and we just simply don't have that material. Mm hmm Yeah, you know, one thing about PSG is, you know, I would tell people that I'd want to record their stories, and they, they would look at me like I was growing three extra heads all of a sudden. And um, and then I would sit down with them and start talking to them, and, like, these stories would start pouring out, stories that even they had forgotten about, um, stories that they hadn't realized that other people wanted to hear. Um, my, 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 one of my favorites was when I talked to Bella and Skycat. They, they originated the Bass Ritual at yeah. Pagan Spirit Gathering. And their stories of how they, they started that, and they shared the chants that they did, and... Uh, they talked about the year of the tornado where they were all singing and chanting and holding hands in ditches <laughs> as they, they waited to see if the tornado was going to come to the valley. You know, th these are stories that, you know, are important for us to remember, um, but they're not stories that our elders really consciously think of as being important, you know. And it's the same thing like, you know, there are stories that my grandparents um, told me and that I would ask to hear again, and they, you know, they didn't quite get it. You want to hear that old story? And I'd be like, well, well yeah, you know, I, th that's interesting to me. And then there are things that I never thought to ask my grandparents about that, you know, I wish I had been to the stories. Um, because it was just something that at the time neither of us really thought was that important to, to share. So well, That's why I kind of like your approach of just interview anyone and everyone. Because mm -hmm. there's enough interesting stories to go around. Yeah, and sometimes that doesn't go so well. Sometimes it doesn't, but, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a chatty person. I will talk to anyone for as long as they are willing to talk to me. We will find things to talk about. I co-sign that that's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I totally, I totally uh, uh, held him hostage <laughs> for a while, picking his brain on on all things witchcraft and Wicca and, and pagan trends, so, yeah. Star, you wanna, are you interested in talking a little bit about the kind of pagan founders history thing, or is that something you're saving for a story? No, I, I definitely think you should share that, because I find that fascinating, how you, you, <laughs> you, uh, you were working on that. So, you heard it here first on PCP. Uh, spent a bunch of the Pantheacon weekend contacting a number of elders in the community, putting together a project where within their traditions they would agree to take what I call a second degree initiate, which usually has to do a service project, young pagans, and marry them with one of the founders of this movement that you know kind of came out of Berkeley in that area in the 1970s and interview them, not so much about the traditions they've established now and their full body of work, but how was that? How did you come together with these three people and how, you know, how was forming the first pagan organization and that kind of thing? And then that will be considered service in their path to degrees or whatever it is. And it's going to be cross traditional, meaning that in order to avoid the kind of veneration thing, we're not going to have a reclaiming person interview Starhawk. We're going to have somebody who's 
you know, studying, you know, uh, Nordic reconstructionism, interview Starhawk. And then the idea is to put all this together and it creates two things. It creates a story of the founding of neo-paganism in this country. And the other thing it does is taking these 20 or 22 year old initiates and let, having them do the interviews, it sends them into the future 50 years from now as being people who knew the founders of this movement, which is kind of a cool thing. Yeah, I like the idea. Yeah, and that's what that's what Peter. That's why I said he has levels of resources and deviousness far beyond. I talked to him, and he'd be like, "I talked to so and so, and so and so is on board." And I mean, he totally just completely put this whole thing together over the weekend. It was fascinating. And hopefully, hopefully, it solves the problem of shitty pagan video on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know because I suspect a bunch of these young people are going to try to interview a lot of these elders on Skype and you know try to get kind of images and that kind of thing. So we'll see how it works out, but at least we'll get the information. Hey, Skype's come a long way. <laughs> you can you can stream it over UStream. It'll capture it, record it. You, you, if you need post production help, you know where to go. <laughs> or pre production help. It's something that just I, needs Skype. To be done. You know, Skype is a wonderful piece of technology unless you're doing a podcast on, you know, using technology. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the irony. <laughs> it took a minute, didn't it? <laughs> oh, that poor episode. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, that was a... Uh... And what Peter was doing, that was happening all over PantheaCon. People were putting together projects and, and making book deals and, and trading business cards and making connections. It was, it was really a fascinating thing to watch um, happen. You know, I mean, like, I, I'm still shocked at how many business cards I managed to collect of, of really fascinating, interesting people who wanted to keep in touch. Um, and, and and that was that was just yeah it was a fascinating and interesting thing and I was I was very impressed by that it was uh lots of pagans moving and shaking and getting things done that was that's what it was this was the event where pagans got things done <laughs> and that was really cool so Yay. yeah <laughs> you gotta admit though that the whole thing of like pagans with business cards it's kind of like you know christians with peace pipes it just doesn't seem to make sense <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah and the whole the whole pagans in business suits thing was yeah, was a little odd our suit. i'm mr mr conservative pagan over here <laughs> you know i i considered wearing a, a suit <laughs> to Pantheon. i yeah, seriously you'll be did doing like cosplay you'll be where you'll be the cold chick with pink hair and a suit I know. I, I thought about that, and and I, I I eventually decided against it, but um. But now I kind of wish I had because that would have been awesome. You know, when I first got there, I'm looking for Star, and I'm looking. I wasn't sure when her flight was going to land, and you know, you're thinking she's telling everybody just look for the person for p with pink hair. It's Pantheacon. <laughs> Which one of the sea of people with pink hair? <laughs> there was some really cool pink hair there. Let me tell you, there was some really cool pink hair there. <laughs> I think mine was the most neon, though. I think I got points for brightness. Yeah. Okay, Star, you are Kara's roommate. Do you know where she was going with this rant she had on um, uh, her Pantheacon article today on the PNC about the under 30, over 30 pagans crowd? Yeah, the, the older pagans telling the younger pagans to shut up and go away. Um, yeah, there was, you could definitely feel the generational differences at, at PantheaCon when people would talk about things. Um, there, there, you know, I, I don't know what, cause we, you know, we hung out a lot, but we weren't like the Bobsy twins and, and attached at the hip the entire time. So I don't know what specifics, um, she was referring to, but that was definitely, um, something that you, you picked up on. Where um, and 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 in trying to talk to people about the pagan newswire collective, you know, we we definitely picked up on some of that from some elders, um, who were just they weren't against us, but they were they were definitely very skeptical and very concerned. Um, That's gonna be my new analogy: pagan elders that are against pagan news are like white people that used to own slaves. <laughs> They're just old and outdated and need to go away. But we need oh, to my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was harsh. That was really Holy harsh, shit. Dave. Even for you, that was yeah. harsh. My jaw Man, hurts Dave. from hitting the floor. 
That was that was that was unnecessary. So let's harsh document it before they go away. <laughs> that's 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 harsh, Dave. No, I mean it's not that bad. But yeah, there, <laughs> you know, there's 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 definitely that feeling, and you know. Working with Pathios and, and with the PNC, I have encountered that vibe from pagan elders. And what I have learned is that, you know, I just end up moving on and working with the pagan elders that are willing to work with me. So the projects that, uh, that pagan elders are working on where the elders are, are interested in working with the media get more media coverage. And that is the practical outcome of that. And, and, and I think that will change. And the will history and nobody will care. No, 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 I don't think that. But I think that will change as, as we become more established and as our reputation um, becomes better known. And I, I think that will definitely change. But yeah, and, and that's really just been like the past few years all, all over the board that there's really been this feeling of generational differences. Yeah, I know there's a lot of generational differences. It's just so weird for me to hear it at such a, a, a national event. I mean, I know PSG, it really wasn't like that at all. I mean, there was a lot of intergenerational interaction and there wasn't that animosity. It was just a lot of, I don't know how to use a computer, so I don't know what you guys do, but it sounds really freaking cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't. I don't know. It, this kind of whole thing is for forty years in the pagan community. The word media meant you know go climb an oak tree and claim you weren't there. Uh, the media, the, the reputation within the pagan community was that the media was here to do fluff bunny stories or make Wiccans look bad or make witches look bad, and that, that's forty years of that experience. So when you're talking about talking to people in their sixties or seventies that had forty years of this kind of experience, and you're using the word media, it, it's just kind of having the get people in their 60s and 70s to unlearn something that's a long time tradition and you know, they're, they're human like everybody else it's hard to unlearn stuff as we get older I know you know the same thing with me so I, I, I think there will be supporters I just think it's going to take a little time we don't realize how new a pagan media is in their world view yeah. a friendly media you know yeah it took, a, it took a while for people to learn to pay black people I mean it's going to take a while for pagan media Dave. to get accepted Dave. <laughs> You are totally going to be struck down by lightning. I am so glad you're in Houston right now. I really am. You know, I'm just saying. Well, you're, I, mean, yeah. I mean, that is the level I'm of gonna like, I'm going to like stick pagan as. elders on you. Well, I can. It's, it's, it's fun. But you have to admit, you know, Dave, yes, that's a bit much even for Dave. But he does have a point. I mean, yes, it's 40 years of having to unlearn all of that. But it's also 40 years of not living in a under a rock and in a bottle you know so the lot has changed it just generally in society as well i mean so to say that they'll have to unlearn certain things i understand but it's only to an extent i mean i don't know about the pnc but i i don't think the ppp or other pagan podcasters are going to actively hunt down elders who are going to be dicks to us you want to go and fade away and and not be here when people are trying to help keep you know all of the family together well you can go screw yourself then you know why waste our time Just you know the thing is that isn't what we're talking about we're talking about elders who and, and i was kind of present you know and they were expressing these concerns and these reservations and stuff but they were like really polite and really nice about it and i think we're taking oh, that yeah. as it was you know it was a real big deal that they didn't want to have anything to do with it. at least the experience at Pantheon they seemed very well, know, yeah it was not, I wasn't referencing they were that closed, they had concerns no yeah and okay. I'm not talking about people like that I'm, I was um, reading through Kara's article and she had you know an incident that she actually witnessed that she wrote in that article about this and uh, I don't know I don't want to somebody has to pull it up or something but she she wrote about how an elder yelled at a, a younger pagan for wanting to use technology to to help bring more people together. Um, I'm talking about that kind of that kind of elder who is actively hostile to media. Yeah, but they're a minority. They, they they really are a minority. I mean, the majority of the elders that I met at at uh, Pantheacon and that I have met <clears throat> in general 
have have been very open and, and friendly. They have concerns, but um, but yeah, I I didn't witness that. But you know, <clears throat> it's kind of interesting. We're talking about the current uh, generational concerns. Um, you know, they had their own generational concerns way back in the day when you know you had Gerald Gardner and Robert Cochran and um, and Doreen Valiente and Alex Sanders, who were all very, 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 very public. And, uh, and and there was sort of a pendulum swing in the other direction when a, a lot of groups decided that they weren't comfortable with that sort of publicity. So so a lot of these in their in their very in their younger days, some of these elders witnessed the the horrible things can, that can come from being too open to the media. I mean, yeah, if you look no, on I mean, YouTube, come on, come on, man. I mean, you've been fighting for the, the pagan community has been fighting for the media to respect pagans, and then that there's media that respects pagans, everybody's like, what the fuck? I mean, going back to my slavery analogy, it's like fighting against slavery in a war for fucking five years and be confused but, you gotta be black people now it's like what but the fuck is wrong with you but that's no that i mean that's that's really dave that's not a fair analogy i mean these, these are just people i mean that's like that's like me expecting my grandmother to figure out how to use uh facebook my grandmother's like 85 you know i mean but there's plenty of them that do yeah well yeah but for her i mean she grew up on a farm you know, I mean, she doesn't th – that's not something that's even in her scope and her worldview. It's not something she ever uh, imagined would, would be around. Uh, when I talked to elders at PSG, one of them came up to me and he told me, he's like, it's not just that I never thought <clears throat> that, you know, um, there would be media people at PSG. He said it was just that the whole idea of there being a pagan media movement – He's like, it wasn't something that ever even crossed my mind. It was something that, that was just completely mind-boggling to him. And this was someone who was very supportive, and he said, you know, I I'm really glad you're here, and I'm glad you're doing this, but I can't even really wrap my mind around it. It's such a new and, and unusual thing. So You know, one of the things that you're talking about really hit home with me, and I'm sure you can imagine being involved in COG. I have a whole lot of intergenerational stuff going on. Uh-huh. And that's that some of the elders, I mean, there's some stuff that, the, you know, the people in this podcast and even myself have learned and accepted and it's part of normal life. For us, we can develop real relationships. I mean, the example is Amber. I consider Amber a friend of mine, but I've never met her face to face. And, you know, you get online and you chat and you do whatever. And, and these elders don't even know what, you know, most of the, you know, last, laugh my ass off kind of letters mean or anything like that. They don't really get that people can, through digital media, develop real relationships and things that are anything deeper than just, you know, reading a news article. And so their whole thing with the technology thing and with media and with, with websites and with podcasts and everything else is they just don't really – they have a generational difference that says, I don't understand. I can't bond with somebody unless I'm right there looking them in the eye. So they just have a different worldview. Yeah. But I, I didn't I didn't I didn't see anything at at uh, Pantheacon uh, regarding generational differences that that really concerned me. I heard some funny stories of some misunderstandings and that sort of thing that kind of cracked me up. But it that had less to do with generational things than with people's personalities. Um, but you know, one thing that Kara brought up in her article that we didn't cover before that I would like to briefly mention was, you know, I, I'm a Wiccan. And Kara is uh, is a Greek Reconstructionist, a Hellenic, and we would be at the same event, and we would see people who identified as pagan. They did not f identify as Wiccan. Um, when asked a question, they would use Wicca centric language to answer it. And you know, Kara was kind of offended because the question was was aimed toward paganism in general, not 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 towards Wicca. And then I was sitting there, and I was sort of offended because you know. They uh, they didn't call themselves Wiccan. They didn't identify as Wiccan, um, but but they were they were sort of using the the language of Wicca and um, and the uh, and, and referring to the practices of Wicca um, as a as a pagan thing. And I, I found that interesting that you know at these events, even though we're becoming increasingly more diverse, we still tend to default to Wicca. 
And that was a weird sort of thing. You know, I, I've noticed that in other places, too. And, uh, and that was something interesting. Kara and I had a long discussion about that afterwards at how, you know, Wicca has sort of become the universal language of paganism and, and whether that's really a, an accurate thing. Um, I'm just glad maybe I'm not because the only it's... one complaining about it anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it might be because Wicca is so freaking generic. I mean, the, the basic Wicca that you can get, Scott Cunningham, you could fill in the blanks with anything. Anything, really. I mean, that but, that's why, even though I worship the gods of my own people and Hawaiians, I'll still call myself a Wiccan, because you know what? At the end of the day, I mostly speak English. So... You know, I mean, there, you you hear that kind of like maybe it's, I you know I don't know why, I want to know why, because there are so many different kinds of pagans. I think right. I think a lot. I mean, there's so many pagans still that think that paganism is Wicca. They think that the only thing that is pagan is anything that resembles Wicca. Well, you know, I. I, I think, well, with Scott Cunningham, you know, I, I, I've read his books and I, and I have respect for him, but he really reduced it down to the barest bones possible. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you can do that with, with almost any, any religion. You can reduce it down to the, its absolute barest parts, but that, that removes the whole uh, living tradition from, from the religion. But I, I think what's troubling about it is, is just that, you know, by defaulting to Wicca, especially if you're not Wiccan and you're defaulting to Wiccan language, um, not only are, are you disrespecting the, these other really vibrant uh, pagan religions that are out there, it's also sort of disrespecting Wicca because I know, I know there's an issue with, with Wicca for some people. People... Um, uh, since especially since Ronald Hutton's Triumph of the Moon ha has come out, they uh, they they sort of actively disrespect Wicca, but they're still using Wiccan language and they're still uh, using Wiccan practices and and in forms and theology, and, oh. and and that kind of disturbs me a little bit. Star, welcome to the club, though. That happens to everybody. That happens to indigenous peoples, Native Americans, Hawaiians. You have you see it everywhere, where they, you know, people come in, and they're gonna they're gonna use gods and goddesses from all over the fucking place, and they'll sit there, stare you in the eyes, and say, "I, I think they're all archetypes." You, I mean, you get. It it just it happens and then that that's neo pagans for you. <laughs> yep. And, well, well, go ahead, star. Well, it doesn't make it it, it right though. And so oh, that yeah. was something. Don't think it's right. <laughs> so that was something that concerned me and Kara because there was such diversity there um, that uh, that that we were we were a little surprised that we didn't hear people using more diverse language when they were asked to uh, talk about things about paganism in general. Um, and Star, uh, do, you, do you remember our conversation when I was talking about that history project and, and I paused and said you know I'm calling it a second to reinitiate because that's my tradition other traditions have a different name no you broke right. up there so a lot of us didn't hear that <laughs> yeah yeah, but I mean that's that's kind of the example is you know I'm talking about it from a perspective as a wick and that that's what I'm calling it yeah. but I'm saying right. you know, other traditions have a different thing and I think that's just that's just learning a common courtesy that's going to start happening in the community more. People are going to, you know, I'm using this language because you can understand it, you know, yeah, but that doesn't mean it's your language. Everybody's just going to learn to translate degrees, uh, you know, okay, so a, thick, a second degree Wiccan is the equivalent of a third degree in Temple of Set, and this is the equivalent of that degree and that, and so forth. Everybody's just going to pick up on it. Hey, Dave, give us a chart. <laughs> Ooh, it doesn't have color and pictures. <laughs> yes. I, I'll put some glitter on it so I can sell it at PSG. I mean, PSG. Yay! <laughs> People at PSG are more intelligent than that. <laughs> uh, but I, the, the one thing that, that bothers me is when people are using Wiccan language, they're engaging in Wiccan practices, but they get completely offended if you call them Wiccan. <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, what makes you not Wiccan? The fact that I don't call myself Wiccan? Uh, sorry, not good enough for my book. You're Wiccan. <laughs> yeah. There are people like that? Yeah. 
a lot of people like that. There, yeah. there are actually, there, there are there are a lot of people who who their their basic forms of of worship, their worship language, uh, um, and, and their identity is basically Wiccan, but they become very offended if if you refer to them as Wiccan. It's, it's as if. It's it's as if you uh you meet someone who uh practices all the uh all the forms and and rituals and uses the language of Judaism and and when you ask <laughs> them what their and when you ask them what their what their religion is they say they're Abrahamic. <laughs> it's like well, that's a bit odd. <laughs> so, um but yeah, so we we found that sort of sort of interesting because, you know, um it I guess it is a very popular sort of religious language within our community and it's one that a lot of people are are familiar with. So I I mean, I understand why it's happening, but um I don't think I, people I, realize how much it pisses people off. I mean, in, in some parts of the world, they make laws against that stuff. That's how pissed off people get about it. I mean, like you can't be a Christian in Indonesia and, and be talking about God as if he's Allah, even though technically it's the same thing. But they just get really pissy if you start using the language of one religion to describe another. It's like, no, you got your own vocabulary. Use it. Well, but that would be work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what it boils down to, really. I mean, it's easier for a lot of people. It's it. Laziness is like how we can say that alcoholism is a disease – Laziness is a disease. It affects all parts of your life, even to the the moment when your face hole starts moving and making sounds. I mean, it, Maybe instead I write of a twelve step you know, program for that, you work with D on that. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, I mean, it, it was just interesting, and it was something that we noticed. And I don't think I really noticed that as much at PSG because at PSG they. There was a, a ritual where they made actually space for people to come forth and 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 speak in their own religious vocabulary. And so they had a Satru and they had Druids and, and, and that was interesting. That really was. But I, I found that weird and, and unusual um at at a uh, at Pantheacon. So it, yeah, it was something that, that spurred a really long interesting conversation between myself and Kara that was kind of fascinating um, and these issues are hard I had a conversation with one of our interfaith people and, and I asked him so how come you do interfaith and he says because intrafaith is too hard <laughs> speaking to our own community is more difficult than dealing with the Christians it's huh. true and, and it's I think really he's got true. a point he's, you know, we're so attached to what we believe and where we're going and what our movement is doing in our particular paths that, you know, we're becoming somewhat even more difficult than the Abrahamic religions to deal with. And it's a good heads up. It's true. I mean, you know, trying to, uh, the, okay, a, lo a long time ago, there was the, um, oh God, this was about 10 years ago. Uh, there was the pagan unity campaign where they attempted to define paganism. Wow, that was 10 <laughs> years ago now. Wow, I'm getting old. I know. I has am it been too. ten years already? Yes, yes it Shit. has. Shit. And uh, that created this huge controversy because you can't define pagan. You can't define pagan. This is what's so interesting about it. You can't define the word pagan any more than you can define the word Hindu. Hindu represents such a wide variety of religious practices and religions and beliefs. It's it's not a single body, and and so so I find that fascinating that we have got a a word to describe our traditions that is just as meaningless as the word Hindu, you know, I mean Hindu comes from the Indus River, and, and pagan's just this Latin word to mean hick, so um, it's I, I find that fascinating. <laughs> Well, but the, I, I'm hoping that, you know, as the pagan community continues its its growth and spread, it doesn't equate diversity with difficulty. You know, it, it doesn't, you I don't think, have I think, to I think PSG is a great example of that, is that, mm -hmm. isn't, you know, I, I, I keep telling Scurvy, there's about a thousand people there, and you're probably going to encounter 500 different traditions. 
that we all get along. And it's not this weirdness to it that that you get so many other places. And it seems Pantheon kind of is almost like one of those places. Well, there certainly are a bunch of different types of people bumping into each other at Pantheacon. Um, everyone I met there was very friendly, but I had this interesting interaction. Um, I wanted a soda, and so I, I, I left the room, and uh, I headed towards the little vending area at the end of the hall to get myself a soda. And uh, this <laughs> and this woman, who was very goth, was passing me in the hall. And like I had to everyone else I had encountered, I just sort of smiled at her and, you know, acknowledged that she was, you know, we were passing each other in the hallway. And she rolled her eyes and looked straight ahead. And I was like, oh, okay then. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I don't remember where I was going with that, but that was an interesting anecdote. But for the most part, um, you know... It was a very friendly open event, but there were definitely very many different kinds of pagans. And I think PSG maybe attracts more of the people who like to be earthy and camp out for a week. And, you know, you well, don't worry I, about I, I hugging think, everyone because everyone smells bad by the end of the day. <laughs> well, I think, I think PSG is also one of those events because it is intentionally built to design to build community. You're not going there to be a stick in the mud. You know, even sticks in the mud like me learn to shut that off for a week. When you're not busy dying. When I'm not busy dying. <laughs> yeah. You're not allowed to die this year, Dave. We've got too much planned for you to do. Mm -hmm. Well, if Star would have taken care of him. I am completely oblivious. I'm serious. There's a reason why I'm not a nurse, why I'm not a doctor, she why I'm not in doc care. From red versus blue. I will seriously let you die. <laughs> I'm just I'm gonna tell you right there. I'm 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 very happy to tease out the story of your grandmother from you to record that for posterity. <laughs> but if you're so <laughs> you won't live to stroke, see it. <laughs> but if you're suffering from heat stroke, don't expect me to save you. Because I will be like, Oh, they look all right to me. <laughs> So yes, Dave, is, Dave should be very thankful that there were nurses and healthcare people who were at... Yeah, you know, thanks to last year, I probably got off to wear like an because LED I would have let him die. <laughs> that says, time last pissed, and it'll just have an LED, <laughs> you know, 13 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I totally would have let you die, Dave. You looked fine to me. You did. So, yeah. That's the reason Star is not in healthcare. <laughs> They're definitely not, not letting you volunteer at you know, med camp. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, that's not going to happen. So, but um, but yeah, I, Kara actually did a really, really interesting uh, um, piece on Pantheacon, and it was. Well, now that the PNC has a website, we can reference it at PaganNewsWireCollective.com and click on – what was what blog was that? Pagans, Pagans and politics. politics. Yeah, yeah she's on Pagans and Politics. And there you go. So, yeah. And I, I am slowly starting to, to write about the, uh, the Pantheacon experience. It was, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, I will definitely be back next year. Um, hopefully a little more prepared for the, the fast pace and the, the hoopla and, and, uh, and, and be prepared to, uh, to just get drawn into interesting conversations and, and not be able to do everything I plan to do. But that's how pagan events are like this. You know, you never get to do everything you have marked out and planned to do at the beginning. So, but it, it, it was fun. It was an incredible event. I highly recommend it to anybody. I really do. Um, I, uh, I I I was I was overwhelmed. So Kara, we were actually just talking about your your article on pagans and politics, um, and especially the part about the Wicca centric language. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, my internet crashed earlier. Um, so yeah, right. so I was so the, the, we had the the interesting um, uh, panel we were at where 
you know, you're a, you're a Hellenic recon and, and, and I'm a Wiccan and, and people who weren't Wiccan were using Wiccan language <laughs> to answer, answer questions. So, um, and I was just remarking that I'm glad I'm not the only one complaining about this anymore. Well, yeah, well, it was kind of funny because then, you know, I, I look back through the audience at that time and at other times when some of this is going on and you can kind of see other people just, you know, they kind of do the sigh and they kind of settle in their chair like, yeah, here we go again. And, you know, I think it's so ingrained in people, they have no clue they're doing it. No clue. And, and I don't even think that they can understand that they're doing it. Because uh, that disconnect on that question, like Star and I looked at each other and I was just like, yeah, they in no way had any idea what question you were even asking. So, well, I mean, I, I think that goes over a lot of people's heads that they are really aggravating and annoying a lot of people by doing that, including Wiccans. Well, you know, that, yeah. that sort of, I did notice that, you know, people tended to stick with their specific groups. Like all of the recons tended to stick together and, yep. and, and, and the goddessy people stuck together and the, the Wiccans stuck together. And, um, cause like I said, you know, I mean, this was the festival that needed to be more about diversity than unity. And that's not a bad thing at, at no. all. Yeah. But, um, there, there definitely was that sort of, uh, I think uh, it sounds more like this was a, a festival about compartmentalization rather than diversity. <laughs> yeah, but that's not a bad thing. Yeah. It was nice to go to an Asatru ritual that was 100% Asatru. Yeah. It was so Asatru that me sitting there wearing my pentacle, I actually felt a little out of place. And that was cool. That was all I right. think it, yeah. It's nice when people can push themselves past their comfort zone and and you know, experience a ritual or experience a workshop taught from an entirely different perspective than than what they're used to, and that's fine. You know, my only bitch is if you are having what you're what you're terming a pan pagan conversation or a workshop that's that's for all pagans and not coming from the perspective of just one tradition or path. Uh, you need to you need to have language that is then inclusive because don't tell me that this is a pagan panel of people talking about, you know, whatever, when really it's Wiccan. Yep. Because that gets annoying. I, that I am pretty much done with. And, you know, one of the, one of the things it does is, you know, you, you do start to feel like, why am I here? I obviously don't belong in this community. If this is what pagan is, I'm not that. Oh, as a Wiccan, well, where I get do I pissed fit in? off because they're watering down my traditions. Yeah, not that it's very traditional to begin with, but it's just like there's not much there to begin with. Why are you watering it down? <laughs> well, exactly. It, well, it's just you know keeping true to what you are and just labeling things what you are, and and you know that also kind of ties into a, a pet peeve of recons is one of our big things is just say what it is. Don't try to make something what it's not. Just say what it is and everyone's happy. If if it's Wicca, great. If it's UPG, great. If it's, you know, something traditional from X tradition, great. Just say that and represent it as such. Then everyone's happy. You know, you know um, not that I'm bitter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the... One thing that I found really interesting, though, was that even though there was this diversity and there was this feeling that, that people were sort of separating off into their own groups, I never entered a workshop where I felt like I wasn't welcome. And I never entered a ritual no. where I felt like I wasn't welcome. The, the one time where I thought this could get interesting was when I showed up at the, uh, the Troth block. And, uh, I, you know, my hair is neon pink. I'm wearing my pinnacle. Pierre had given me this cool little goddess figurine that I'd put on my necklace. I'm sitting there. I look very Wiccan. I look very fruity Wiccan. I honestly <laughs> do. And that's fine. That's sort of who I am to some degree. And, um, and, when, and when they were passing the horn, they, they'd already said that they only wanted uh, the honorings to be of the Norse pantheon. Or you could simply say to the gods. And when they 
came around, and the woman who was carrying the horn came around to me. I could see it in her eyes. For a split second, she hesitated before she handed me the horn, which I thought was interesting. <laughs> and I knew when I stood up with my bright pink hair that there was, there was sort of a hush. It was like, oh, shit, what is she going to say? <laughs> and I stood up, and I raised the horn. I said, to Odin. And, you know, everybody went to Odin, and, and it was fine. But, um, but, yeah, there were moments like that throughout it where people were participating in, in each other's events where, you know, someone would stand up and you'd be like, oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> and that was actually kind of fun, though, because I never saw anyone do anything outrageously inappropriate. Everyone tended to be very respectful of each other's traditions. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would agree with that. There was, there was no time that I ever felt uncomfortable or unwelcome or anything like that. There's, you know, it, even the, the, the I could even say to that, and that again isn't a big deal. Is is just the that light exclusionary feeling that you get when people are, are, you know. Wiccans are a majority of pagans. They just are. And there's starting to be more of a coalescing of the language and concepts and terms and shared history and all of those things which are extremely positive, wonderful, awesome things to happen within a new religious movement. And the, the flip side of that is we're trying to make this umbrella at times um, – and, and fit everyone under it. And, and I don't know how many more years that's going to be possible because I think neo-pagan in the future is going to mean Wiccan and that's going to be it. Yeah. And that, that's my thought. As a Wiccan, that bothers me deeply. Uh, yeah. Because, I mean, that's one thing that, that is, you know, when I started this podcast, it's called the Pagan-Centered Podcast. It's not for Wiccans hanging around in all day, you know. It is... Four people from four very different pagan backgrounds talking about stuff, right? You know, and that's uh, that's because I mean I, I just grew my frustration started early because well I was in a quote unquote pagan study group and it was just Wiccan study and that like we never even really so much as dabbled on the Ozatru stuff and mm -hmm. that's I mean there is so much more to paganism than Wicca and a lot of it's actually interesting. Yeah, you know, that's something I had to learn pretty quickly, pretty early on when I started working with Pathios, is um, when I first started writing with them, I, I had made the decision that I wasn't going to write as a Wiccan, that I was going to try to use uh, the most inclusive language possible, and, and it's really, really hard to do, as diverse as we are, and so I made a decision that when I was writing from my own heart, that I would write as a Wiccan, and that when I was trying to write something that was pan-pagan, the best I could come up with is instead of saying the gods or the goddess or, or what have you, I would say all that which is divine. And that I felt, you know, sort of covered whatever you define that to be. Um, and even so, I, I sometimes sit and wonder if that is, that is not a good enough term, you know? Um, it's, it's hard to be inclusive because we are all so different. And, um, and, uh, I, I think that's one of the reasons, you know, a lot of people try to define the word pagan and, uh, and I think that that may be, you know, a, a not useful thing. I think it may be better to leave that as as an open term as possible mm -hmm. because really that word is the only thing we have sometimes that links us together. And, um, and we are, when it comes to politics and when it comes to fighting for religious rights and that sort of thing, we are stronger together. And um, so we, we, we really do have to figure out a way to work together without becoming the Borg because nobody <laughs> wants that. Yeah, but at the same time, a lot of stuff that I predicted would happen a couple of years ago did happen. You know, when the Wiccans got everything they wanted, okay, what happens with the rest of the Neo-Pagans? Oh, look at that. The Wiccans got everything they wanted. Uh, yeah, we're going to say, screw you all. We're going home. 
And yeah, nobody's gonna say, yeah, that's totally what the Wiccans did. That's really what I mean. You know, the whole, the whole, uh, what was it for the Oz the the Hammer campaign and all that. Yep. I mean, sure, there are individual Wiccans helping with that, but it just seems like the Wiccan community as a whole, with its vast resources, just is not contributing to that right now. Well, would they look at it as mission accomplished? Yeah. They got what they want. It, it does make it interesting. Um, you know, I think there's definitely a lot of areas that we can come together. And most of those are in areas of, you know, civil rights and that type of thing, religious rights. And that's that's areas that we, you know, we can definitely come together and share and, and work on those things. Um, I also think that we're just plain too small. You know, paganism, if taken as a whole, we're, we're just playing too small at this point um, to have a lot of separate things going on. Yeah. And so we, we do need the strength in numbers. You know, mm -hmm. I just I just wonder how long it will it will continue. I like being part of the pagan community. I enjoy it greatly. Um, I don't see me leaving the pagan community. However, I can see the pagan community uh, defining me out. Uh, I, I think I think the pagan community, as it stands now, will continue to exist if we make it exist. Uh, it's, you know, I mean, there's been a lot of people that have wrote into our show. It's like, wow, I didn't realize there was more to paganism than Wicca until I listened to your show. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's kind of what we do mm -hmm. around here. It's the pagan-centered podcast. You know, <laughs> it's right in oh, the right. title of the show, but pagan has become such a misused word. But well, yeah, I, I think yeah. I think as as there's you know like like yes, there the I think we're seeing a lot of movement around paganism where people are settling down and getting out of their intro to Wicca phase. Yeah. And we are seeing a more diverse pagan community. And I don't think that necessarily has to be a bad thing, but at the same time, we cannot just sit on our laurels and expect everything to work out when people have ever diverging religious beliefs. Yep. I think yeah, it's I also to give freedom to people who are in the pagan community or or who are Wiccan or who are also true or, or et cetera, et cetera, is that to say you don't have to appeal to anybody except who you want to appeal to, who you want to reach out to. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's you see it in the PPP. Most of our shows are to de are dealing with spirituality, but I can think of a few shows like the Pagan Homesteader that deals with exactly what it says homesteading a, a homesteader who happens to be pagan you know and i i would like to see more diversity within our own members you know some you know a comedy show that uh comes out because these people happen to be pagan and it doesn't always need to be pagan humor you know what i mean or it's a a i don't know shit something <laughs> something and it doesn't need to be about spirituality talks all the time. You know, it's about like how this, this recording itself is about an event. It was fun. It was interesting. Not all the questions were, how did you feel? It was like, okay, well, how was the Wi-Fi? You know, how was the, the hotel? It was the food good. You know I mean? It's norm creating your own s normalcy. Right, you're you're looking for when things can mature to the point that we're we're um, not so focused on on the religion as a defining element of everything we do, but just that it happens to color what we're doing. We're doing mm -hmm. X, but it happens to color that, and that's a that's a maturity thing within the within the community. And I don't mean that on an individual level. I just mean as in a, a life cycle of a movement or a religion, um, and we're we're pretty young. Mm -hmm. Our religion's pretty young. I mean, however you want to look at it, and I don't care if your grandma, you know, initiated you and and twenty of your relatives. Um, it's still pretty young. I mean, age yeah, aside, it, it doesn't really matter. Young or old, these are things that still impact. You know, the the, the native community, the the everybody community. So it's it's. 
it's just how how you're you're willing how much work you're willing to put into your community and to associate only with people who are gonna haul ass and put their blood sweat and tears into it you know and not wasting time taking joe blow and everybody off the street just because because you know you know when i interviewed truly at psg that was something that he he brought up i actually i believe it was after the interview when we were just sitting and talking and he said that you know he felt that he was limited in what he could contribute and envision for the pagan community because he was a convert. And he, he was really amazed by, by the kids who were being raised in pagan traditions because they didn't have to fight for their insights and they didn't have to fight for their, their worldview and their perspective um, the, the way a lot of us who have, have converted to, to pagan religions have. And... Um, you know, I, I think that's sort of a fascinating thing, and I think that's part of the maturing um, process. But, you know, we already have things like that where we've got, um, we've, we've got the juggler and we've got pagan in politics. And, you know, sometimes you guys write and the, the connection to, to paganism is tentative, but that's okay because it's still pagan voices. And, uh, and and that's a powerful thing. I'm, you know, I'm constantly impressed and amazed by pagan and politics and the juggler um, because they are, they're pagan without being labels out first, you know? Yeah. And, that, and I think that's, thanks. that's one thing we need to sort of move away from is, and, and we do it more on the internet than we do in person, is that when we talk about being pagan, you know, we shove that label out there first. And uh, some of my best conversations with other pagans have happened where we started talking to each other and then only in the course of our discussions did we actually end up defining who we were um, because we, we were able to get to, to connect on, on a level uh, without being able to – without having those, those defining barriers of, of labels between us. And I think that's mainly an internet thing, you know? Um, or at least that's my perception. I think it's also important that, you know, as the generations pass, you start to see, you know, because kids are growing up pagan or neo-pagan is, you know, you see ba more and more of that baggage and trappings of whatever religion a lot of pagans came from previously are, they're falling away because their kids and their kids' kids don't identify at all with those trappings, you know. So it's it's a slow, slow process. Those kind of issues. Take, yeah, people have, that have grown up with a religion, you know, it's it's just much more natural to them. You can see that they're not always translating it in their head, and you know, I, like I don't I don't care how long we practice, those of us that convert, um, no matter how devout we are, how much um, in tune we feel, that type of thing, you know, we're a non-native speaker. <laughs> so we're, we're always going to be translating at some level in our head. And there's a filter that we're looking at things through that just won't be there for someone who is, you know, raised in the religion. Um, and that is a really interesting thing to talk to uh, some of this younger generation that they have been raised. They've been raised as pagan. And it's extremely natural to them. They're very easy feeling in their religion. Um, and I'm not saying that they take it disrespectfully or too casually. It's just part of them. I mean, it's just fully incorporated into into who they are. And they're, they're pretty secure in it. And... Yeah. That is a really neat thing to see and to see their insights and how they act and react to others about their religion. Uh, you know, I think we can learn a lot from them. You know, we uh, on the Pagan Women's podcast, we had a, a really funny episode. It, well, it wasn't funny. It was it, it was funny afterwards when, you know. We realized that we had an entire issue on on pagan children and pagan parenting, and and all of us were childless. Um, <laughs> 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 we still had some interesting things to say, um, and you know, 
one of the things that I've been dealing with is is I at one point had made the decision that I would not have children. But, you know, Christians definitely have a feeling that they need to have children and they need to raise them in their religion for the most part. That that that's important to pass it on to the next generation. So I've I've actually been dealing with that idea of you know, do I need to have children and do I need to raise pagan children to give something to the future? Because, you know, the 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 conversion model, the idea that we will always be made up of adult converts um, isn't sustainable. And while we're not preachy and we don't stand on street corners and, you know, we don't go door to door knocking and say, hey, have you heard the good news about Odin today? Um, <laughs> we, although I, I, that would be fun to do. Um <laughs> <laughs> Just, I'm picturing yeah. Odin going, what good news? <laughs> <laughs> bum, bum, bum. What would that be what you're speaking about? <laughs> With a so, suit uh, and a tie riding a bicycle. <laughs> so, so, right. So, so the, you know, there's, there's definitely that feeling in other religions. And you know, we've always been very leery to, to raise kids in, in our own traditions. I know a lot of pagans for a long time had the feeling that they shouldn't impose religion on children. And um, the result of that, I, I know I know of several pagans whose, whose children, um, as part of the, you know, rebellion process against mom and dad, became Christian. <laughs> and then their parents are like, oh, and, you know, well, you know, you didn't raise your kid in a religious tradition to give them any, any, any guidance, and they, they, they found that on their own. Um, not to say that they wouldn't have found that, you know, if if they had been been raised pagan, but um, so that's something I've sort of been struggling with, you know, myself. Is you know, do we do we uh, do we need to have more emphasis on on raising pagan children, and and do we need to have more emphasis on um, having pagan children as active in our traditions? Um, and I, I I peaked Peter's brain a little bit over that, and and a uh, poor guy. He was probably glad to get away from me and my nosy ass questions. So, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, as that's long like as you a kept totally sharing the chocolate, you were good. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Well, you bought the chocolate, so that's you true. know it was only fair. <laughs> but um, yeah, but that's probably like a, a subject for a, a totally different show. Um, <laughs> we've gotten a little bit sidetracked, but that's okay. It's fun. You can bring it up on the Pagan Women's episode on Sunday. <laughs> pagan Women, every Sunday, somewhere that you can't listen to them live, but it comes out soon afterwards. <laughs> Pretty That's much. True. Hear childless women talk about parenting. It's fun. Well, if I'm on, at least I have a kid. <laughs> yes, you should, you should definitely come. I'll be the lone breeder. <laughs> Yes, we need someone who's got some actual experience instead of all of our, our theoretical parenting skills. <laughs> and, and soon Barrett and Peter and I will be starting the Pagan Men show. Yeah, hurry up. <laughs> and we're, 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 as soon as we figure out what we're recording, we'll do it. I love that. Let me know. I'd like to tell Brandon and get him involved in something. Mm. Okay, we'll consider him man for part of that show. <laughs> oh. Ouch. We can we can have him on a cooking episode. Oh god, please don't. <laughs> I think I'm still recovering from that meal. Let's let's not bring <laughs> those memories. Hmm. Well, I, I have to admit I think I'm completely talked out on PantheaCon. I, I think we all are. So let, let's, yeah. let's get through some uh, final announcements and then we'll get to final thoughts. Some final announcements next on the PCP 2011 road trip schedule. Schedule. Uh, Dave, uh, wow, I have just talked to myself in my third person voice. That is excellent. Me, Scurry, Woo! Amber, Brandon, and perhaps others will be at the powwow at the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And you can visit Native American Museum for more information about powwow. And we will be bringing Princess Meredith, and we will we we will be recording that uh, Pagan Road Trip. That will be Pagan Road Trip Season 2. And for Pagan Road Trip Season 3, me, Star, and Scurvy are piling into Princess Meredith and doing a cross-country trek to PSG 2011. And Peter's got to catch his flight now. 
Bye, Peter. Bye, Peter. Bye, Peter. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Good night. And I already went on my YouTube rant, so let's do final thoughts. Um, my final thought is that I really enjoyed PantheaCon. It was a very different vibe, and I am looking forward to going back next year. Yay! I had a I had a great time at PantheaCon. Like most any event, it's the you know it's the people that you meet that really make or break an event. And um, so if I go again, I'm gonna have to room with Star again because she was an awesome con buddy. But, you know, I think next time I would have to, um, you know, I don't know, maybe pace myself a little more with downtime because by the time we got to Sunday evening, I was decidedly antisocial and just not not wanting 1,000 people speaking in my direction anymore. <laughs> but, it, it, but it was really an amazing thing, and I think people need to experience some of these events Um you know, whether it's a festival or a con or a pan- something large like PantheaCon, you really need to go out there and experience something like that at least once. Just do it once. I have to agree. Kara was a great con buddy. We, we, we hung out. We talked. We missed events because we got into conversations. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, she has a great sense of humor. So, so. Uh, I, I definitely appreciated her elevator story. I get a kick out of that. <laughs> <laughs> My final thought is hopefully we can hick, hook up with their media department and do wall-to-wall coverage of this event next year. That would be sweet. We can all be like hanging out outside because we're like, well, screw it. We're recording all the sessions anyway. Let's just talk to people. I think my final thought is between... Um, being able to talk to Dave about PSG a little bit further and hearing all the good things about PantheaCon, I have a little bit more inspiration to go to some of the events now. So hopefully Ooh. next year, I will be traveling. Yay. Um, so my final thought, yep. I would definitely have to say that I look forward to seeing you know all of you at PSG this year. Yay, it's official I'm going. And I look forward to being at PantheaCon with Dave next year as well. Um and hopefully getting more you know pagan media even more of a kickstart, you know. Um so that we can have the kind of quality that our own community deserves with regards to news coverage entertainment um, I think our community deserves it and it, it it needs to be there so awesome uh, yeah. so this has been a little over three hours of the Pagan Center podcast <laughs> wow. join us next Yay. week when we will not be talking about Pantheacon <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Primary recording is that.